The opinions and views expressed in the following program are those of the speakers and the host and do not necessarily reflect those of Yokely Scott Corporation and your sports network. Yeah, I've been closer to Jesus before, so can you help me out? Can you help me out? Am I on my own? Am I on my own? Or can you help me out? Am I on my own? Am I on my own? Or can you help me out? Can you help me out? Welcome into a Wednesday edition of Running Point presented by Greenwood Chevrolet on Mahoning Avenue in Austin Town. Ron Potesta with you alongside, no, he's not Donald Duck, but he is wearing a duck uniform. Uh, Anthony Hardwig joining what me. What kind of Mickey Mouse organization would call their team the Ducks? I, I have no little, idea. Little Space Jam. Here yes, for you yes, guys. yes. This is good culture reference right off the bat. That's what we're talking about. Uh, Oregon Ducks, am I correct? Oregon Ducks. Sabrina, who's, whose jersey is Sabrina that? Sabrina Inescu. Nice. Uh, now playing for the New York Liberty. That's what I thought. And the Winba. And the WNBA. Sounds like a radio station. Uh, but, welcome back to WNBA. Uh, welcome, welcome back to all sports radio, <laughs> WNBA. Oh, Lordy. Uh, 330-886-0813, the MP Vivo heating and air conditioning hotline open for business. This is a... Uh, a rather special day in the um, HQ here in East Palestine. Yeah. This would be an anniversary day. Yeah, on, on today, four years ago, you know, DJ and Brian Scott started kind of the journey of YSN, went out to, to get interviews with schools and try to sign schools along. And then everyone knows, you know, that the first four schools to sign were Crestview, South Range, Latonia, and Salem, not in that order, because of course Latonia. Yeah, we were first. number one. Yeah, so, <laughs> so that's the, the only time I can say Latonia was number one at something in quite uh, some time. But uh, yeah, we were the first school to sign on. It's uh, kind of like Lewis and Clark or Magellan and his uh, and his you know, posse. Or Star Trek. Yeah, or Star to, Trek. To yeah, to boldly go, go where no man has no gone born. Yeah, there you go. No local sports coverage has gone. Uh, there you go. So uh, happy four year anniversary. Now we looked it up. Apparently a gift for someone uh, who is celebrating their fourth year anniversary. Now, this is wedding, but fourth year anniversary. Apparently the gift is supposed to be fruits and flowers. See, I was kind of, that seems kind of like low key for four years. Well, I mean, Here's it's four years and... isn't really a big milestone per se. I mean, it's not. Like... No, but it's like we have four years, four years. I mean, I don't know. I, just, I feel like. Fruits and flowers is like here's your three month. <laughs> well, I mean, look, some I mean, flowers and fruits. Hey, look, if if a truck stuff. comes down here with a whole bunch of strawberries and pineapple and okay. whatnot, yeah. I'm so, going to be a happy camper. So that, that, that's the thing. I mean, if you're going to do flower uh, flowers and fruits, you better you better you know ramp up the effort a little yeah. bit. Let's get like edible arrangements. And Absolutely. Then, uh, maybe, Absolutely. But uh, what's what what are the what's the biggest measurement of flowers? It's, uh, a, a bushel of flowers. That's the there you go. A bushel. Well, uh, a, a, a barrel. Nah, I don't think about flowers. Don't belong in a barrel. Um, a bouquet. Uh, yeah, but bouquet. No, that's not big though. That's like. Well, I mean, it depends. I mean, you can have a you can 5, have a pretty 000, large five thousand bouquet. <laughs> yeah, you, you can have a pretty large bouquet of of flowers. Uh, you know, just give me some roses and go from there. That that's cool. Roses are cool. I mean, except for the fact that you. Might have to hold one of those things and they get the thorns on the side. No, well, that I'm tired of hearing about. <laughs> That's just, I, I'm so sick and tired. And that and the fact, in the most important rose ceremony of the year. Oh, shut the <laughs> hell up. It is not. <laughs> I should play Bachelor Bingo. How many times will this be said, this be said, this cliche be used? Yeah. It's fun. Uh, it's, it's, if you played uh, uh, shots for every time someone said, this particular line. Have you ever, like, um, 
the movie Tombstone. If, <laughs> yes. if you watch the movie Tombstone, any time Doc Holliday or the cast of characters uh, uh, all had a drink or took a drink, you, you had did, to take a you drink. You had to take a drink. <laughs> About 20 <laughs> minutes into this movie, you're just... Yeah, the floor. you're on the floor. You're on the floor, just going. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, so it's uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, good stuff. Uh, all right, welcome into a uh, Wednesday edition of a uh, sports talk show. Three three zero eight eight six zero eight one three. The MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning Hotline open for business. So prior to oh, I don't know three days ago, did anyone know what the hell Spider Tack was? Uh, great job of journalism <laughs> by the folks at the Athletic was, and uh, other things. I thought it was a gadget used by Peter Parker. but Yeah, uh, who knew? Uh, spider Tech is apparently now a, uh, a very big part of what's going on in Major League Baseball with the uh, pitchers. And interestingly enough, yesterday, someone from the New York media finally did their job and asked Garrett Cole about spider tack and if he had used it. And the response by Garrett Cole was, well... He talked it, in it, circles. It, it, he worked it, around the wagon. It was a very politician and, type uh, of talk. The, my rule of thumb always is if someone asks you a yes or no question and you don't say no, by definition, you're it, saying it's, yes. It's a yes. And he did not say no. He worked around. He worked in circles. He never said yes, but... Uh, he didn't say no either. I mean, he, I didn't. I don't know how to answer that, Garrett. It's a yes or no question. You have a fifty-fifty shot. Yeah, <laughs> it, and the thing that kind of got my attention was the deer in the headlights look, followed by the uh, followed by the mm, I really don't know how to answer this. Followed by, well, we've been told generations of generations of people have passed down some stuff from generation to generation and. Uh, you know, I, I don't know anything about the, 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 I'm like, okay, all right. The good political answer, perhaps maybe you have a life in politics after it's all said and done. But the truth of the matter is, uh, you and a bunch of guys in major league baseball are about to get the hammer dropped on you. Now, unfortunately, major league baseball is going to do this crap of, well, we're going to suspend you for 10 days. Anytime you have any of this stuff. No. No, did you just did you suspend the steroid people ten days when they got caught the first time with steroids? No, it was eighty games. Treat the pitchers that are cheating just like you treated the steroid guys who are cheating, and and be done with it. And and now I think everyone is is going to have to have the conversation. And this this conversation, like a broken cell phone, uh, a broken window, goes into a million and one different uh, directions. For example, it, maybe it's not the pitcher that's hiding the stuff. Did anyone think that possibly it's the catcher who's wearing the stuff? So when the pitcher gets checked out and everything is okay, but then a foul ball comes back and it's all sticky, what the hell's going on here? Did anyone uh, think that possibly it's the catcher maybe who the might have it on his mitt or might have it on his fingers? Maybe it's a shell game, and no no one player has it for more than one inning. Yeah, maybe all it's... Sudden, may, all of a sudden, the shortstop has it. Yeah, <laughs> maybe it's the third baseman when they strike no, out a batter, and no. the catcher throws it to the third baseman, and he puts more of that crap on the I ball. think it was the third baseman in the library with the spider tag. The game of Clue is over. <laughs> Anthony has won. <laughs> Colonel Mustard did it! He did it with a spider attack in the billiard room. My God. My God, Jim. <laughs> no, but yeah, I, I think um, it's funny how we treat... Nah, it, it's cheating. Cheating with pitching is like different. You know, it's different than steroids for some reason. And it, you go back to the history of baseball, trying to find ways to better your pitching with residue or whatever. It's been like a tradition. And no one's ever looked at it as the way they do with steroids. Yeah, I, I just don't understand that. Now, listen, I don't have a problem because you get a rosin bag on the back of the pitcher's mound. Everyone has a rosin bag. 
You want to go to the rosin bag, put a little sweat on your hands, go to the rosin bag. You got a sticky, sticky substance right there. That's not a problem. That To me, that's part of the game. But when you start putting sunscreen and then use the excuse of, well, I don't want to get sunburned on a day game, but then you're using the sunscreen by wiping it on your fingers, going to the rosin bag. Now you got a really sticky substance that you can uh, that you can use. Okay, we, we got a little bit of a problem with that. It's it's to the point now, and I said this yesterday on the show. Always remember, offense sells tickets. Offense puts butts in the seats, but defense will ultimately win a championship. But offense sells tickets, so when the steroid era came around major league baseball wasn't really wanting to stop the gravy train because everyone and their brother was coming into the ballpark because everyone was bamboozled into thinking that it was real when everyone and their brother in the media knew it wasn't but nobody had the stones to say hey this is bullshit come on let's be serious here for a second uh but nobody wanted to stop it because you got all kinds of money people are coming in Here's where the problem is. If you don't have offense, a lot of the borderline baseball fans are going to go, God, this product sucks. I don't want to be anywhere near this. There's a reason why, and, and yes, COVID is the big reason. But when, when the stadiums get all opened up, there's going to be a big reason why Major League Baseball's attendance is... And it's not going to be just COVID. It's going to be people are the, the ordinary baseball fan that loves offense is going to go, Ugh, this is a terrible product. There's not, there's hardly any offense, way too many strikeouts, yada, yada, yada. Major League Baseball better get it, get on the stick real quick. And uh, yeah, I know. And, and just lay the hammer down on these people and say, look, you've got a rosin bag. You have your own sweat. That's it. Anything else, we're banging you for 80 games. First offense, 162 the second offense. Third offense, you're out of baseball for good. That's it. But we know that'll never happen. Of course not. Because this is not the way. Well, the union will sit back and go, oh, that's not fair. Well, look, I mean, we, you know, I talked about this last week. If you're not cheating, and it was the same way in the steroid era, if you're not cheating and you're borderline between going to the majors and, and staying in AAA or AA ball, and if you're not cheating and somebody else is and they're putting up better numbers than you, you're then you're screwed. You're not going to be in the major leagues anytime soon. So you're pretty much forced to do the immoral thing. And, and if you want to get to the majors and make the money uh, and, and possibly make more money, depending on how well you are uh, in that game, you're going to do anything under, its, under the sun to try to get that opportunity including taking steroids. Well, now it's the same thing with a, with a pitcher. If if the last pitcher in the in the uh the staff and and he's borderline ready to go to triple A ball and somebody else is using that stuff and the guy that's fighting for the last position isn't using that stuff, guess who's going to go to triple A? The guy that isn't using the stuff because he doesn't have the he doesn't have the edge the other person does. I mean, this is this is where it hurts. It hurts those that are that are going to play the game the right way, but not get to the major leagues because their talent hasn't been amplified due to some Ill- illegalities. You know what gets me about suspending a pitcher for for ten games? You're really suspending him for two. A starter, for yeah. Eight out of ten, they're not touching. <clears throat> That field. Yeah, as a so, starting pitcher, if you're suspending him for two games, it's, it, so it's your 10 days, it's two if, starts. If you're going to suspend him for 10 games, it should be 10 starts. It should be 50 games. Right. Yeah, it just and actually, it should be 80 games. So a starting pitcher, what is that, 16? No. Uh, yeah, it is. It's 16, uh, 16 starts. See you later. You'll see you in about 16 starts. And, and maybe you'll uh, figure out your lesson. If you don't, well, then you'll get suspended for a whole year. And then if you don't learn it after two times, well, then you don't get to play this game anymore. And then you lose all this money. And then your kids won't get the G.I. Joe with a Kung Fu grip in Christmas time. There you go. It's an old line from Trading Places. God, I love that movie. Three three zero eight eight six zero eight one three. 
the MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning Hotline open for business. Brian Tolnar is coming up next. Did we get Champ's question from last week? Yes, I have it written down. Okay. Oh, good, good call. Yeah. And um, and then we got to talk about John Rahm because yeah. that that's just... It was unfortunate. Uh, I mean, he's got a six-shot lead. He comes off the, off the course, and they tell him he's tested positive for COVID. Uh, sorry about your luck, dude. Uh, I think one of the uh, one of the talk shows that I listened to it's a national talk show. Um, he had said, "I don't have any sympathy for him because he didn't choose to take the vaccine. If he chose to take the vaccine, well, he he would have been he would have been playing in the final in the final round of the tournament and would have won this thing. But because he didn't uh, choose the vaccine." Sorry about your luck, dude. You're out and of the it was, tournament. It was him that tested positive, right? It, it was, was him. It wasn't, that, it wasn't a contact tracing mm-hmm. thing. He tested positive for it. Now, there's people that are saying, well, he was asymptomatic. He should have been allowed to, to, to do the, the fourth round. That's not how, COVID That's not how it goes. Uh, you know, it's it sucks. Look, and, and, and like I said on social media, uh, it's terrible for those that put money or Skittles on John Rahm to win this tournament. We're, we're law-abiding citizens. In yeah, Ohio. I mean, in Ohio, we can't say, you know what we mean. The Skittles. Yeah. Taste the rainbow. Yeah. So, unfortunately, now, I, from what I understand, there were places that honored the honored the Skittle uh, wager, uh, and then people were able to get their Skittles based upon the fact that the winning uh, score was like 13 under, and he was 18 under through three rounds and there was no way John Rahm was going to be five over for the tournament or five over for the fourth round. So uh, there there were some places. You mean there were some places that didn't just oh mm. money. Yeah, there we're were places there it. were places that sat back and go, yeah, we're going to have to give you the skittles. It's uh, it, if not we would we would look stupid. So um, not everyone though. Not as mad about the fact that it happened as I am mad at the fact that it was, the way it was handled was just I mean you, you took right after he finished the round right in front of all the cameras yeah that was and said, that was bad hey you're out and then you you got to watch him break down in front of the cam- I mean you can do that in the scores tent or yep. in the clubhouse yep yeah that was bad now and look truth be told everyone in the media likes to have that raw moment but I'm not one of those yeah, and people. And I don't think the media came to well came to the, well, tell them right here so we can get it. like I don't yeah. think it was a decision. I mean, no, been, I mean I don't think that anyone I don't think anyone was mad about it. I think it was just the PGA saying like we got to tell him right away and didn't think like this can wait ten minutes until he gets in the club. Yeah, see that this brings up an interesting. Uh, well, maybe topic. they didn't let him in the clubhouse because he tested positive. So well, that could have been the case too. Him. You know, you bring up a really good point. Maybe they just sat back and said, hey, you're not going anywhere near the clubhouse because you just tested positive for COVID. So we're not going to we're not even going to take that chance, even though it's a small chance. We're not taking that chance. So unfortunately, we're going to have to tell you here. That's the second time, right? He's been tested positive during the tournament. I don't know. Didn't he say like not again? Uh, when, when they when they told him, you know, we're gonna have to ask Brian about that. I could have uh, swore he was like not again. Well, I mean, I know someone did test positive for COVID uh, earlier in the uh, in the golf season, so we'll have to ask Brian about that. When so we just get to remind on. people, Champ's question, which he called in after Brian's segment was over, uh, he wanted to know about the the trending of left-handed golfers and if it was becoming more common than it was back in the day when it was a lot harder to get your hands on left-handed clubs and left-handed equipment. Now, all of a sudden, you have a lot more ways to get left-handed clubs, customizable, you know, online, stuff like that. So are more golfers willing to stick with their left hand, or is it still a thing to try to teach left-handers to golf with their right hand like back in the day? Yeah, it's interesting. I'm, I'm, I'm left-handed, and yet I was never taught how to hit a baseball left-handed, was never taught how to golf left-handed, I always hit everything right-handed uh, and, and still do on the golf course. Now, I learned way too late in life, uh, and, and my bat speed, which is non-existent on both sides of the plane, oh, it's even, I, I it's even less a, on the I left. I thought you could hit a wiffle ball to the, to the building across the... Well, I think, you know, I mean, it was never proven that I couldn't. No, we never did that. I, exactly. I, I was waiting for that. I, I, wanted to, I wanted to at least try it. I mean... Probably now would have landed. Now you're dogging your back. I, I, I probably would have landed in the middle of the street, but I, hey, I wanted to give it a shot. Uh, but no, I, later in life, I, I, I was like, 
man, this is comfortable. And that left-handed, this is pretty comfortable. And I take a few swings. How come I, how come I was never taught how to do this? This is comfortable. This is, it's a little more comfortable than the other side. Now, the other side, you know, like I said, I'd been hitting right-handed baseball, softball, uh, my whole life right-handed. But then, like 20 years ago, somebody said, hey, turn around and, and, and go left-handed. I'm like, what are you talking about? Well, you're left-handed. Go and see if see how comfortable this is. I'm, oh, man, this is okay. This well, is doable. Guess. I'm like, I cursed these people that did not tell me that I could do this left-handed. And, you know, I tried golfing once left-handed. It didn't go very well. Um, but it wasn't, it, it wasn't, it, you know, it wasn't foreign. It's not that I couldn't swing a club left-handed, but the equipment, I mean, I'm a child of the 70s. I didn't even see left-handed clubs until I was in my 20s. Never saw a left-handed club in my life. My father's left-handed. He, he golfs right-handed. My older brother's left-handed. He golfs right-handed. I, I never saw a, a, a golf club, or at least I didn't. I never saw a golf club that was fitted for left-handed people or left-handed swingers uh, until I was in my 20s. It's one of those things. That's what Champ brought up. I mean, it, back in the day, it was so hard to even get left-handed golf clubs. It was either you couldn't find them or you couldn't afford them. But nowadays, it's it's. I would imagine at least it's a lot more accessible. I would Which hope it's not. I would hope it's not more expensive. I mean, yeah, like if you're getting if you're getting fitted for clubs, whether you're lefty or righty, you should be paying the same. Yeah, I mean, I would hope it's not. Oh, well, you're left-handed. Oh, wow, we're going to be charging you three thousand dollars extra. Here, here you go. I'm like, oh, wait a second. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's not easy being a lefty. Yeah, I'm telling you. I'm, I'm telling. Well, it's, it, I'm listen. Writing stuff down is. I get ink marks all over my uh, well, fingers no, because is, like, I write it like this. Write the opposite way of left-handers, like to, to make their letters. Oh yeah. So it blows my mind trying to write left-handed because you have to think completely different than what you've been. Oh, no, I know. Doing. I, thank God I never broke my hand or wrist or anything like that. Because I look, I have god awful handwriting to begin with. Can you imagine me writing right-handed? That just, no. My, I, my dad's a lefty, and going to dinner with him would be a, a, an adventure because, you know, he can't have someone on his left side because then they're bumping his elbow. Oh, yeah. Move. So yeah. he'd have to sit on the end so he could have the left-handed oh, space. It, trust me. You have no idea how horrible that is. If you're sitting at a table um, and, and you're – Ready to eat. You have to sit. And, and think of a rectangular table. You get the, the, the two like people this. sitting on either side. And then you've got three people. Like it's eight people that are going to fit in the table. Can't be in the middle. No. You cannot be in the middle. You cannot be on the side. The side. Uh, toward, the, toward, toward the one end. Right. Can't do it. Because you'll get, you'll get bumped like crazy. The only side you can be on the left end is the left end, and you can you can be in the corner, but you can't be on well, on either I'm, side. Could be at the head of the table. Could be at the head of the table, you know. But, 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 I mean, never never at the head of the table. You know. Well, what can I tell you? I <laughs> we was, know, Ron. I was never. I was always in the kids' part of the table. <laughs> Ron, go know? to the kids' table. No, Ron, listen. Ron. Even in my twenties and thirties, Ron, go to the kids' table. Well, why? Well, you're not even married yet. Go to the kids' table. All right, I'll hang out with my nephews and nieces. Hey guys, what's up? Can I see yeah. you? Uh, like, hey guys, is that, is that and, tea? Yeah, guys, cool. get get out of the way. Get, I, I'm I'm gonna sit down here, and then as I bring my bottle of beer and whatnot, <laughs> what what are you are you giving these kids beer? No, no. I'm not doing anything it's like that. Root beer. It's root beer. Root beer. Come yeah, on, stop that. It's, I, don't, I, don't, I don't. It's not root beer, kids. I, I don't do anything <laughs> like that. What, what what is going on here? It's Twenty it's, bucks. You never saw anything. Yeah, you didn't see anything. <laughs> yeah, go away, kid. You bother me. Uh, yeah, so uh, it's there's only certain places that you can sit as a left-hander without getting elbowed. Mm. So it uh, life is tough if you're if you're sitting in a family table and, and eating dinner and you're left-handed, uh, life sucks. I mean, it's just uh, just the way it is. So, so we'll ask Brian about the trend of left-handed golfers along with John Rom, and then we'll break down the uh, what's it called uh, the uh, Palmero. Uh, championships. And that's got to be in South Carolina. 
Is it is it in South Carolina or is it? Uh, I wrote down the name in my opinion. Yeah, the Palmetto Championship Palmetto. at I Congaree. Said, uh, that's at Ridgeland, South Carolina. And I say Palmetto because South Carolina is the Palmetto state. Well, that makes sense. Then. So it's, it had to have been in South Carolina. By the way, Jason Kokrak is not in that tournament. That'll be the second uh, consecutive tournament that he misses. He's he spinning did, his winnings is what he's doing. Yeah, well, this is true. He did this prior to the Masters. Uh, so, you know, he, he's good. He'll be, he'll be in good shape for the U.S. Open. Uh, I was thinking the U.S. Open was this weekend, but it's Father's Day weekend. And Father's Day Sunday is next Sunday, not this Sunday. So there you go. We can also talk about, Brian, about the, uh, the Father's Day raffle uh, that you can get into by donating to Mill Creek Park. And I'm sure there's a lot of Father's Day gifts in the pro shop that you can uh, get a gander at before Father's Day. Indeed. Which is coming up very quickly. Yes. Uh, not this Sunday, but the following Sunday is Father's Day. And uh, get your uh, get your dad something. Uh, and hopefully uh, everyone will have a really, really good time uh, honoring their uh, honoring their fathers on uh, Father's Day, uh, June the 20th. Um, I had to get your comment on this. I was just completely floored, miffed, uh, whatever adjective you want to use. When we were... Um, Dana Balish had had announced uh, before the program yesterday uh, the All State softball, uh, and and we did get some really good representation from around the area, but there is one name uh, that was not on this list that I am completely blown away by the in, by the the lack of uh, of uh, smarts by anyone. In the coaches association, how in the world does Bree Callow not make all state in Division Four? I want to start by saying I have no idea how the voting system works for the Ohio uh, Softball Coaches Association, who made this all Ohio team that we're talking about. This isn't like the AP. Uh, this isn't like your normal all Ohio. This is from the coaches association, which makes the polls that that uh, Erston finished number two in. I, I that, that that list was a head scratcher. I mean, Emily Holland's honorable mention. Yeah. Uh, d- that didn't make sense. I mean, Julia Nutter didn't get anything, and he, she was the YSN batter of the year, and she put up numbers to back that up. Um, there was a girl from Wooster Triway who we got to watch in the state tournament. She broke the state record for RBIs in a season. She's not even on the list. She has she had eighty six RBI this year. How do you not put someone in the all state that drove in eighty six runs like, in the softball I'm season? There, I'm sitting there thinking like, who's making this list? Uh, they're <laughs> obviously not checking it is twice. There, is there a comments and concerns question uh, I, number? I, I because just, and and I I don't know this to be a fact. Look, Bree Callow. Let's just. I mean, I have her numbers here from when we talked about it. Three hundred uh, one hundred and thirty five point one innings pitched. 308 strikeouts, only 11 walks, in an ERA of 1.10. I don't get it. Like, if you can, if you literally can say that there are more pitchers with numbers that beat that on the All State team, then then I'll I'll gladly have that that discussion. But uh, I'm going through those names and I'm thinking these then these numbers don't match up. <laughs> yeah, and 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 again, I don't know if it is uh, the head coach is is putting up some uh, candidates. I don't know how that works. I, if it's on the head coaches, shame on them. Uh, I don't know if it is, though. Uh, what I do know is uh, this, boy, is that a glaring um, uh, a glaring, glaring uh, wrong. And, 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 and even more wrong is that poor kid from Wooster Triway? You drive in eighty six runs in a season. You break season. a state record. And you're you not. break a state record. You're not even on the first team, second team, or honorable mention all state. Get out of here with that crap. Oh, That's just absurd. Um, but while we're talking about it, let's go over the kids that did get uh, named as we look at this in Division One. Lydia Spaulding was second team from Austin Town Fitch. She'll be going to Penn State next year. Had a heck of a year, you know, not the innings pitch that some other pitchers had because of an injury, but still had an ERA that was under one um, uh, and hit pretty well, too. So well deserving of her mention. We had Division three first, uh, Division two first team, Cam Latanzio from Poland, and uh, second team was Jordan Anderson from West Branch. 
In Division Three, first team Bree Kohler from South Range. Second team, Alyssa Sheely from Ursuline, Emma Gumont from Champion, Cassidy Schaefer from Champion, and Emily Holland got honorable mention, which that was another head scratcher for me. Because I was like, Emily Holland, she put up numbers that were almost comparable to Brie Kohler other than innings pitched, because she split them with Paige Ogden, and I'm thinking, not at, le- not at least second team? Yeah. Uh, Kelly Zolik from South Range also got honorable mention. And we had no YSN uh, representation in Division Four. We had a couple of local teams, but no one from YSN. Yeah, Bella Spano and Becca Landis from Matthews, uh, first team Division Four. Ashley Deans from Matthews, Billy Miller from Bristol, second team, and we congratulate them. But I, I I'm speechless. How do you how do you not have? Uh, there's a few names where I just sorry this this doesn't make any sense whatsoever, and and I. Again, I don't know if the kids are nominated uh, and, and you go from there. I don't know how this process is. If the kids are nominated, then it's the coach. Then it's on the coach if they're nominated. But, again, I don't know how what the process is. So I don't know who's to blame on this. But somebody really screwed up um, on this one. And, and not just in our area, like I said. Like Anthony brought up, there's a young girl from Wooster Triway breaks a breaks a record in Ohio for most runs batted in in a season, and she's not even on the list. That's absurd. <laughs> that, that's just absurd at that point. I don't know, Haley Massaro from Triway. We recognize you from YSN. You're not you're not obviously not a YSN family, but but we watched you all all the state tournament. We got to call one of her games because they played West Branch. Uh, remarkable talent, and uh, you know you don't do it for the accolades. It's nice, but at the end of the day, what I mean, who's going to remember who's on the All Ohio team compared to who broke the state record? Your name's always in the record book, and whether or not true you're not in the All Ohio team isn't going to change that. So that's true, uh, but still, I mean, it's, it, it it's, sucks. <laughs> it, it does. It absolutely um, does. I mean, this is the uh, it, it takes me back, and I know it's apples and oranges, but it takes me back to 1995. Albert Bell puts up these ridiculous numbers. 50 doubles, 50 homers, hits over 300, drives in well over 100 runs, and he gets screwed out of the MVP. Mo Vaughn gets the MVP because Albert Bell's Albert Bell, and nobody likes him, so the writers did set back and, well, we're going to stick it to you by not voting you for MVP, putting your stupidity above... Yeah, but then uh, you, above his anger issues. Then you look stupid yourselves because people look at these numbers. Yeah, exactly. And go, you know, what I, were you thinking? Yeah, what, what the hell were you guys thinking? I mean, well, we didn't like him. Um, okay, but that's this isn't a popularity it's, contest. Honestly, I mean, in NFL, remember when Steve McNair had to share the MVP with Peyton Manning? Yeah. Even though the numbers, Steve McNair should have probably won the MVP. No, absolutely, he should have. Uh, but he wasn't the darling. It was, yeah, I mean, it's. Well, which one? Which one has given me a better interview? What? Why does that matter? Are you kidding me? Look, I I had a uh, not not a full blown incident, but I had a thing with Prince Fielder where he screwed me out of an interview, uh, and I I've I said, can't. well, you know what? I mean, it's you know it's it's Prince Fielder. I mean, his kid his his dad was a major league player. He had a little uh, a little bit of a. a What's the word I'm looking for? Um, he, what's the word I'm looking for? The the um, crap just escaped. Well, it me. wasn't crap. And, no, it wasn't. <laughs> um, he, he had, he, you know, he felt that this was entitled entitlement. He has a sense of entitlement about him, where he was like, "Well, you know, I'm I'm a big leaguer." No, well, his name no, was Prince. <laughs> actually, no, you're not. You're in the minor leagues right now. But you know, hey, look, Prince Fielder. If I had had a vote. The one year that he went crazy and did that, I'm not going to turn. I'm not going to hold that against him. Who the hell cares if he, if somebody uh, screwed you out in the interview or this guy's not treating you very well? That's not your job. That, that your job is to vote for the most qualified or the most valuable player. All that other personal stuff, you throw that crap out the window. That that has nothing to do with what this guy accomplished or this girl accomplished when you're putting out uh, most valuable player. Uh, it just, that, oh, God, it bothers me when, whenever that happens. But I, I don't know the, like we said, we don't know the, or and I don't know the, the, the process of how 
people are named Allstate. What I do know is Bree Callow got screwed out of Allstate, and it's ridiculous. It's okay, we got you. You're the YSN pitcher of the year. We yeah. got your back. That's just that. That's absurd. And you'll, you'll be in the YSN All Star game. There you so. go. Yeah. You mean we have an All Star game? We do, and we've announced the baseball game. It's going to be on Sunday. Yeah. At Scene Park. So there you go. Under the lights. There you go. And uh, you know, as soon as we get more information about our softball one, that'll be that'll be announced. But there, uh, there you go. Baseball on Sunday. It's, everyone's uh, everyone's going to be represented on YSN. At field number one? At, at the, yeah, I'm pretty sure. Okay. One. All right. Seven this will o'clock. be fun. Seven bells, Sunday night. Be Under there. The lights. It, should be a, it should be a blast. Should have a good time. It'll, uh, it'll be wonderful to actually see kids from Columbiana County playing in an all-star game. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I say that? Yeah, I did say that out loud. Yeah, I looked at the, the Honing and Trumbull County playing. Oh, okay. Yeah, that, that's nice. We're, we're, we even have a start County because we have Louisville. That's it. So that's it. So we'll have a good time with that for sure. And smoke it. That's it. We'll have a good time with that for sure. All right, it is uh, the fourth year anniversary, four year anniversary of YSN on this date in two thousand and seventeen. Lewis and Clark, aka DJ Oakley and Brian Scott, my captain, my captain. Uh, they set on a journey. Uh, not not uh, to not to you know discover the western part of the United States like Lewis and Clark or uh, discover uh, what Greenland route, and the northern territories the like Magella. Yeah, route to the western world. Yeah, I, I think it was more of a Christopher Columbus type of a discovery uh, where we were en route to try to get some teams interested in the vision of DJ and, and Brian and um, my alma mater. Numero uno. First one to sign up. Uh, and then and look followed, where we got. And then followed by, uh, not necessarily in order, because I don't know the order. I know Crestview, South Range. Well, let's do it in alphabetical order after Letonia, because we all know Letonia was number one. Well, that'd be Crestview, Salem. Crestview, South Salem, and South Range uh, followed. And now, uh, four years later, look at this. Uh, we have a bunch of, bunch of schools on that brick wall. Indeed, we do. And um, always hoping and praying more to get more. Coming. More coming. Uh, yes, sir. A lot more coming. Uh, you thought we were done. No, no. No, no. We're not done. Because we never – manifest destiny. We never stop expanding. Yeah. We're, we're expanding. Uh, so this, this will be uh, – this will certainly be an awful lot of fun. Uh, by the way, uh, news just breaking uh, with the Cleveland Browns. Their uh, chief of staff, Callie Bronson, who was pulled over and uh, – uh, charged with drunk driving on oh, Tuesday, uh, Callie, Brant, uh, Callie Bronson has been suspended. Uh, the head football coach of the Cleveland Browns, Kevin Stefanski, says that she will not be fired. Uh, so Callie Bronson suspended, uh, but she will not lose her job. Kudos to the Browns. Look, I know a lot of folks were sitting back and giving some grief to uh, to Callie Bronson uh, for what she did. My whole thing with this is, okay, this is probably unfair, but like DJ and, and Brian Scott four years ago, they were out to search for new territories. I think everyone pretty much knows women going into sports, into different sports. Into it, it, uh, executive jobs of the NFL. It, exactly. It's it's a journey. It's a it's, new journey. We're getting there. And for yeah. Callie Brunson, uh, you're on a new journey, and the last thing you got to do is do something this stupid. Well, so, you're under a microscope because people are like, oh, women in, women in the NFL. Or, yeah. Uh, one little mistake. Yeah. So... <laughs> Yeah, so just, it's not fair, but you do have to be a little bit on a, on a razor's edge when you're when you're there. You're not going to be treated the same way no. because you're a novelty. And we're not saying it's okay. No, but it's this reality. It's reality. You're okay. a novelty. Women in women in the National Football League right now, especially as coaches, is, is a novelty and as a executive staff. Yeah, it's a novelty. So whether it's fair or not, and I don't think it is, but it's reality. You are on a much different pedestal in terms of if you screw up, it's going to be magnetized it's, far more. It's African-American athletes in the 60s. 
Absolutely. Or in the, in, in the or, 50s. Or in the 50s. Or Absolutely. Pick a decade. Uh, your image is under a huge microscope, and people are just waiting for you to make a mistake. Absolutely. Um, now, I'll give the Browns an awful lot of credit. They're not going to fire her. Uh, but I'm sure that that leash is now pretty tight where you do something again, uh, and hopefully she won't. Hopefully she's learned her lesson. Uh, but if you do something again, the hammer gets dropped and you're out of a job. And, and again, this is probably not fair, but this is part of the higher standard. Not only is Callie Bronson in a position where very few women are, if she screws this up, it reflects on, it the, reflects on the entire gender where the National Football League is going to be very not so receptive. The, well, not, not the National Football League, but all the people that kind of laughed or hit back at the NFL for hiring the, the women coaches, or the, they're going to be like, well, see, I was right. It's yeah, only, but but you're also oh, it's only been a year you messed up. Yeah, but you're you also I'm you're like, also going to have some people in the National Football League kind of hesitant now to hire someone. Right. Well, it didn't work out in Cleveland. I don't know if it. I don't know if we want this uh, on our on our staff because it really didn't work out in Cleveland. I, I we don't want the heartache. Uh, you know, I don't want to bring up Colin Kaepernick, but there's a reason why Colin Kaepernick's not in the National Football League. Nobody wants the heartache. Nobody wants the controversy. And he's not as nearly as good a quarterback anymore. So that's the reason why you're not in the National Football League because nobody wanted that controversy. Right. Nobody wanted to to handle the controversy around it's like him. A hot potato. So it's it's kind of and it's and it's not right. I, I'll be the first to admit it's not right, uh, but it, it is what it is. So for Callie Bronson. Boy, she done screwed up uh, by, you know, doing drunk driving. But uh, the Browns aren't going to fire her. But, you know, you better watch your P's and Q's because you're now on a really short leash. And that's it. This You get and one you shot be, now. I mean, you should, I mean, drunk driving is not something that you should just be like, hey, slap on no, the No, 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 no. Yeah. I, and I think too many NFL pl- is player, players especially have been like, Drunk driving, oh, slap on the wrist, you're fine. Yeah. You go out and play the next week. Well, I mean, uh, let's be and, honest. Uh, the NFL has been notorious with letting stuff go. And, and there's there's a lot of uh, examples that go from drunk driving to a bunch of other things. You know, drug abuse, everything every, everything under the sun that they just go, well, if you're talented enough. That's where I was going to go with this. <laughs> I mean, let's and be look, honest. There's no team that's above it either. Like, So we can't sit here as, as fans that are... Of the Bills or the Chiefs? No, have, absolutely I mean, not. Chiefs have Tyreek Hill. It's it's out yeah. there. Everyone knows what what Tyreek Hill's history is. If you're good, people turn a little bit of a blind eye to that. Yeah, you know. I mean, I mean uh, look, I mean it's a, the second string or third string offensive lineman or whatever <laughs> position out the door. Uh, we don't need you. Oh, oh, but you're the borderline franchise player. Oh, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna stick with you for a little bit. Yeah, there's hypocrisy. Absolutely, it is. But you know, it's if you're productive, you're going to get a little longer uh, length of rope uh, than most other people. I mean, it's unfortunate, but you know, it is what it is. It's the same thing when you're drafted uh, in the uh, in the baseball draft. First round draft picks normally get a far longer uh, rope to work with than uh, 11th or 12th round draft pick because the first round draft pick is the it, it's the basically the reputation is on the line of the farm director and the scouts and if he doesn't work well they're not going to cut him right away because the, it's an ego thing well th- this was our first round pick if we if we get rid of this person it reflects on us as an organization thinking that everyone thinks we don't know how to do our job so we got to hang on to this person as long as humanly possible same thing if a if a new gm comes in the new gm is going to bring as many of his former players high round draft pick former players that aren't in the game anymore or or currently not playing or you know, whatever. No, no, we're going to bring these guys in. Well, why is that? Well, these are guys that I drafted uh, that I still believe in. No, that's code for your ego is such where you want to be right 
and you just don't want to be wrong. So you're going to bring these people in to essentially force the issue of, darn it, these guys are going to get to the majors so I can puff my chest out a little bit and say I was right about this guy. It's, it's an ego thing. It absolutely is. And uh, there are a lot of things in professional sports that are ego things. Because of course. When you're at that level, you're, the ego kind of comes with it. Absolutely. And, and there aren't too many professional athletes that don't have a little bit of an ego. Well, you have to. Yeah. And you also have to um, uh, You also have to be I a narcissist. I think the difference is – well, see, I, I think the difference between the, the two are the, the ones that don't – there's this line between ego and – Maybe maybe even self confidence and ego are, are the two sides of the line. Cause like, you have to have confidence in yourself. Of course. But ego kind of gets in the when you. It's hard to explain, but they, they, you know the line. There yeah. there are plenty of players that don't have like the. I have yeah. to pound my. I have to make sure I. Yeah, exactly. That ego. Yeah. But they're still self confident themselves. They have to be to get to that level. Oh, absolutely. But there's a lot of narcissism in, right. in the game as well. And and some of the greatest superstars are narcissists, where it's all about them. And, you know, I mean, there's a couple of players in the NBA that I can think of that are uh, very much in that but category. We all like Michael Jordan, but. Oh, God. Um, he was He was one of the worst. But he had to be. Absolutely. Like, to be that good, you have to, you have have to have that, that attitude. You have to have that quality. Uh, and it's not a good quality to have if it's, if it's if way too any, much. If, if you're anything else, you're, uh, unless you're a, a star athlete, it's a terrible human quality. Uh, yeah, exactly. But <laughs> if you're a star athlete, you got to have a little you bit of that. It. You, 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 you just have to. It's Because, uh, you, you know, I hate to say this, but this – business or the uh, just professional sports in general is as cutthroat as any other job um you know if someone comes in does a better job than you and you're done so it's, it just is what it I'm is watching my back now yeah what well, we're gonna we're gonna wear turtlenecks the, the 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 kind of the kind of turtlenecks that that are uh, knife proof kevlar <laughs> turtlenecks <laughs> Three three zero eight eight six zero eight one three. We got some Class B scores. You want to go with the index? yes, yes? Because uh, we we're in Class B now, and, and uh, we had six a lot of sixteen U last night. Dura Edge, man, they put on an offensive clinic, fourteen to three over Nightline. Uh, Whiting with a with a Edge win over Avalanche, three to two. Um, a to Z beat Ballistic, thirteen to six. Astro Falcons, you know, doing what they do, winning uh, Creekside. They beat Creekside 7-5. to five, And Prospects took care of Eagle Wear 12-5. We had one 18-U score also. Ballistic beating Avalanche 6-3. to three. By the way, the uh, Astro Falcons-Creekside fitness rivalry. Oh, it's real. that's good. We learned it last year. That is good. When, that's uh, a good rivalry. And it doesn't matter if it's 18-U, 16-U. Uh, fourteen U. That's a good rivalry. I mean, when Creekside won the the championship series last summer, we kind of learned real quick how uh, how dramatic and and emotional that rivalry is. Yeah, no question. Uh, and and again, it's uh, B League is interesting. There's uh, three different leagues. I just like it now that it's all a little bit spread out. I mean, last yep. last year it felt like we were trying to fit in so many games in such a little time. It's like every night there were. Like ten or ten or twelve games. Yeah. Um, now, what what year is this for us covering the B League? Is this the, now the third? third? Okay. Because we had it with the NABF. Okay. In, in so year, then last so year, we're going to get the full money this year with the NABF World Series uh, in town, and I believe it's in town for all three, fourteen, sixteen, and eighteen. You, I, I'm not a hundred percent sure on that. Uh, but I know at least two of them are going to be in in Youngstown, and I I thought I heard all three of them. Uh, we're going to be in town. Uh, boy, that does just, it's great. Now that we're past COVID, I think this is going to be a real nice shot in the arm for the, for the economy locally. Cause mm-hmm. you know, like we said, all these, all these kids, they're going to need a place to sleep. Uh, so the hotel industry is going to be nice. The restaurant industry is going to nice, going to be nice because all these people need to find a place to eat. <laughs> Uh, and the Elmton and Struthers is going to be like, Ooh. yeah, exactly. Uh, the the El- well, listen. I mean, I've been telling people, 
hey, you got to try the pizza because if, if nothing else, the pizza in this area is the best I've ever had. Uh, and I finally got Ron Mayhay, the uh, Scrappers pitching coach, to uh, to go to one of our uh, one of our places. Ooh, where'd he go? He went to Iana Zones, okay. uh, which I said, okay, they're they're on they're on my list, but they're not, you know, they're 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 somewhere in the top ten, but they're get not him. they're not on my they're not in my top five. Get but, him to get him to Pizza Deuce in East Palestine. But he grew up in Chicago. East of Chicago. No, he he grew up in Chicago, and he and I told him I said you have got to try our pizza. <laughs> And he was like, "Wait a second! You know, I grew up in Chicago. Come on, our pizza, pizza, our pizza's really good." I had a conversation with him on Sunday. I said, "Coach, have, us, have you tried the pizza yet?" And he looked at me and he goes, "Dude," he said, "I went to what's that? What's that pizza place that begins with an I? It's a long There's name." A I was like, "Well, what? Iana Zones?" He goes, "Yeah." He goes, "Oh my God! He says, this pizza was better than anything I've ever had." I said, "No, it's, you haven't tried the." Send, fastball yet. Send him to <laughs> Coca's and send him to Pizza Joe's because they take care of us. Absolutely. Absolutely. They're on my list. They're on my list. Uh, I, I tell people. How big is that list, Ron? There's 10 <laughs> places that I would, um, that I would, without any hesitation, say you need to go to these places. Uh, and, and Coca's uh, is definitely on. Well, for, nothing, for nothing else, Coca's pepperoni rolls are the best I have ever had. That's true. Yeah, and I hope my Aunt Mary isn't listening because she'll kick my ass. <laughs> Aunt um, Mary's sitting there like, all right. Yeah, she's cool. like, like, really? That, like that grandma in, yeah. in, the, in the lemonade commercial? Yeah, she's like, this is better <laughs> than your grandmother's lemonade. Yeah. She goes, really? She puts the, puts the necklace that she's wanted for years in, yeah. the, in the garbage disposal. Yeah, that was a bit, oh, yeah, yeah, that's Cut, not going to happen. The one grandma slips the tires. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, uh, yeah. My Aunt Mary makes some really, really good pepperoni rolls, but... Uh, Coca's, oh, wow. That's better. That's, yeah, that's, that's pretty strong. Sorry, Aunt Mary. Sorry, Aunt Mary. That's, uh, you know, the, the Coca's pepperoni rolls are pretty damn tasty. You've been thrown under the bus. So. I, didn't th- I didn't throw her under the bus. <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, your pepperoni rolls are good, but Coca's. Uh, bus, uh, Aunt Mary. I, I didn't do that. I'm just, I'm just saying. I'm just being truthful. Uh, but they're on the list. Pizza Joe's. Uh, their wings are, oh, man, their wings are good. You know uh, the, how fast you can get through those wings. We, yes. We, yeah. we sat through football season. Yes. Uh, but their pizza is really, really good. Uh, you know, I've loved me some Wedgwood. Love me some Bellaria. Uh, Plus, Bellaria has a nice, catchy jingle. Yeah, absolutely. And Bellaria. L- love me some Iana Zones. Love me. Uh, oh, yeah. It's, it's, it's like I said, there's 10 places that I'm confident but now at the top of the list are the, you know the advertisers because they're you know they they are a family to us Coca's and and uh, Pizza Joe's uh, right there. But you know I told him I said you cannot go wrong um, in a number of places. There aren't too many bad pizza places. No, like no. everyone's pretty like good. Yeah, yes. some that are great, but. Yeah, it, it's it, it uh, it's amazing. He I'll goes, about how did this happen? I said, well, there were a lot of Italian immigrants it's, that came to this. It's closed now, so I don't. Hungry House was not good, and it was in that plaza with Family Video and Boardman. Oh yeah, and the windows were dark, and my yeah. dad would always make the joke like, "What are they doing?" There? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, no, I, I didn't trust Hungry Howies. I saw someone hunched over on their steering wheel. <laughs> They're parking lot, so I don't trust. What, are we supposed to cue the Godfather music here? Good <laughs> I Lord. They, I think they took a bite before. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, my Lord. This, this pizza segment went dark real quick. Good Lord. Uh, All righty, then. Uh, By the way, Pizza Joe's, kudos to them, uh, because they are a sponsor of Scrappers Baseball every Wednesday. Yes. Pizza Joe's two dollars a slice, and it is well worth the. Do you uh, hit that up? Uh, oh Wednesday. hell yes, I do. <laughs> hell yeah, I do. Well, I mean, when we're home on Wednesday, we get that in the press box. Hell yeah, I'm on. I'm all over that. Ron, Ron Sashi's up to the pizza table. Yeah. Hold off, guys. Yeah. I got I a twenty dollar bill. <laughs> like a lion, like a lion with the antelope. I get first dibs. You can have the scraps, uh, and everybody here knows. 
Oh, no. I, I'll... I'll y- you share? I'll gladly let someone else go in front of me if if I'm not real hungry. If I'm <laughs> real hungry, like, if I'm real hungry, that that person's getting thrown across the room and, and I'm in line first. I remember eating pizza dough next to you and you were just like... Well, I'm giving you the Italian um, the, the Italian death stare. I'm sitting there like... <laughs> Is he going to kill me? (laughs) (laughs) Cover my neck. (laughs) Oh, Lord. 330-886-0813. The MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning Hotline open for business. All right, Brian Tolnar coming up. We're going to talk some golf. We got questions. We got all kinds of medical questions. We got legitimate golf questions. Uh, And we also got to get his uh, picks for the... Uh, the Palmetto Brian's Power Five, yeah, the bah, bah, bah. Palmetto Championship get at Brian Hungary. A, let me get Brian a theme song. Bah, 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 bah. Brian's Power top Five, five. <laughs> <laughs> coming in at number five. <laughs> number five. <laughs> Here's our long distance dedication, <laughs> dear Brian. <laughs> Brian Tolnar plays the part of Casey Kasem coming up next. Stick around. It's, like a Wednesday, it's a Wednesday edition of Running Point on YSNlive.com. At Greenwood Chevrolet, we go the extra mile for you. By finding you the right vehicle at the right price. And by being with you for every mile of your journey. Visit GreenwoodChevrolet.com and tell us how we can go the extra mile for you. New things happen all day. Some are good some not so good. In today's complicated world, while you're busy working, playing, and living life, we're busy helping you make sense of the day's news. And there's only one place where it comes together with clarity, context, and accountability. It's 21 News at 6 with me, Madison Tromler, and Derek Steyer. 21 News at 6. It's what the day's news really means to you. Welcome home to a home made homier with Baird Brothers Fine Hardwoods. Inspiration starts at BairdBrothers.com and is turned into reality when high quality hardwoods are delivered right to your home. Baird Brothers has the latest design trends, shiplap and skinny lap interior siding, antique oak rustic flooring, and well, you'll find them all at BairdBrothers.com. Ordered easily, delivered conveniently, enjoyed comfortably, BairdBrothers.com. WRS Wealth Advisors, the area's premier wealth and retirement specialists. Located on South Avenue in Boardman. Hi, this is Jim Myers with Myers Family Insurance, your local Medicare and retirement resource. We're excited to have sports back. Whether you're on the field or cheering from the stands, sports unifies communities and brings hope for the future. We're all one team working together. At Myers Family Insurance, we know the importance of a great team. Our team continues to grow to help you with your Medicare and retirement needs. The annual election period is October 15th through December 7th. Now's the time to make sure your plan continues to meet your needs for the upcoming year. Call today. Hi, I'm Colin Chupa. And I'm Kelsey Clem from K-Squared Marketing. Our boutique marketing firm specializes in media planning and buying, public relations, event marketing strategies, and strategic sponsorships. We can integrate our services with your existing game plan, or we can be your entire marketing team. Your goals, our game plan. Let's Let's win win together. together. Call K-Squared Marketing at 330-623-2730 or visit ksquared.marketing to learn more. At Hubbard Chevrolet, Hubbard can help you get the financing you need regardless of your situation. I'm Tony Pache, and I've helped thousands of customers in Northeast Ohio and Western Pennsylvania buy a vehicle. Bad credit, no credit, no problem. I can get you approved for a low interest loan and maybe even a low payment lease on a new car at the number one Chevy dealership in Trumbull County for three years in a row. Visit HubbardChevy.com to get pre-approved or come see me, Tony Page, to get a new vehicle today. Remember folks, Hubbard can help. Every customer has a story and at Greenwood Chevrolet, we are committed to making sure it ends with you in the right vehicle. I get to be part of somebody's adventure, whether it's buying a car for the first time, helping them get approved, or finding the perfect car for their budget. I'm proud that people trust me with their finances. They trust me to take care of them, and they trust me with their story. I'm Tracy, and I'm ready to go the extra mile for you, only at Greenwood Chevrolet. 
Quality, customer service, and integrity. Those are the four words that have driven our success since 1957 at Joe Dickey Electric. Joe Dickey Electric is one Mahoning Valley landmark business that stays current with the requirements of our customers. Family owned and managed, we are an electrical contractor and energy solutions provider. Every member of our team adds to his or her skill set through ongoing training. Residential, commercial, industrial, automotive, and more. We keep ahead of the needs of our customers with a fleet of more than 50 vehicles and 24-7 emergency service, so you're never left in the dark. Jimmy Sudman here, director of Isle Purple Cat and Golden String. We are happy to support YSN and two of my favorite people, Scotty Mincher and Super Dave O'Malley. We are an agency that provides services for adults with disabilities. We infuse humor, passion, and joy into their lives. If you know of any folks with disabilities that need our assistance, please contact us. Your teams work hard and give it all they've got. Well, so does ours. Because 21 Sports and YSN give you extra effort when covering local sports. 21 Sports and YSN, winning coverage of our Valley's teams. When looking for home design inspiration, don't just be inspired, be Baird inspired. Whether new or remodeling, Baird Brothers has the latest trends like shiplap to refresh your home. Go from inspiration to installation with our wide selection of in-stock American hardwoods. From the rustic charm of antique oak to the warmth of traditional cherry, Baird Brothers has what you need to make your home inspiring. Baird Brothers, our family's heritage, your family's home. Welcome back to a Wednesday edition of Running Point, presented by Greenwood Chevrolet on Mahoning Avenue in Austin Town. Ron Polchester with you alongside Anthony Hardwig. And it's Wednesday. It's 1 o'clock or a little after. It is time to bring on our guy from Mill Creek. He is the man that makes Mill Creek go. Uh, he is our PGA guru, the one and only Brian Tolnar, joining us on the MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning Hotline. What's going on, amigo? I'll tell you what, dodging some raindrops and uh, getting a lot of golf in here, which is which is a good thing. It's been a uh, good month of June, albeit nine days in, but we've uh, sort of missed some of the rain, which is awesome, and been swamped with golf lessons, which is a real good thing. It means a lot of people are coming into the game and, and trying to get better. So, you know, we're here to help and uh, having a lot of fun. You know, speaking of lessons, we had a question last week that uh, called in after your segment um, and, and it was Champ, and, and I know Wood Champ is one of our regulars, and, and he wants to he wants to know as a left-hander himself um, if the trends of left-handed golfing have changed since back in the day. You know, you didn't used to teach a, a left-handed hitter to hit left-handed because it was so much harder to get left-handed clubs, and it was more expensive. So the the trainers would just teach left-handers they hit right-handed. But now. I'm assuming that it's a lot more accessible to get your hands on left-handed equipment. So is, are we starting to see more and more left-hander golfers being trained to hit left-handed, or, or is it still this, you know, trying to get them to hit right-handed if they can? I, I think we are. I think we're seeing a little bit of, of growth in the left-handed market. You know, it just accessibility is the biggest key with, with finding left-handed equipment. Uh, going back to when I started and entered into the game and, it was very limited or a, a special order that, you know, took you a while to come in because it was just not a, uh, I don't know, a, a, a popular set makeup back in the day. You know, for however many left-handed people there is in the world, they're, you know, you would think that if they bat left-handed, they're going to golf left-handed and so on down the line. But if you have trouble finding golf equipment, odds are if you want to be able to play golf, you're going to gravitate towards something that's right-handed. I want to say, you know, using a, a, a fact of about 5%, you know, 25, 30 years ago, we're in the game left-handed. And if you watch the PGA Tour, there was like one or two. And if you if you watch the PGA Tour in the last, I don't know, couple of weeks, there seems to be a sudden influx of left-handed golfers. Obviously, Phil went in the, the PGA was at the, at the pinnacle of that. But, I mean, there's there's a ton of guys on the PGA Tour that now play left-handed. That's probably around 20 to 25%. So it's grown quite a bit. Uh, you know, there's a left-handed golfers association that, that travels all over the United States and plays. Uh, we hosted them when I was up in New York. And then, you know, just a funny scenario. I had, you know, we were talking about this over the weekend, you know, playing golf with, you know, my parents and my son. We went out and, and played Sunday afternoon. 
And my uncle plays right-handed, but he puts left-handed. So Preston, our son, who's seven, is like, how, Dad, how come he's putting left-handed? Well, he's naturally left-handed, same scenario, didn't have the accessibility to left-handed equipment, learned to play right-handed. He's a very good, was a very good athlete in college and in high school and so on down the line. You know, you just sort of adapt and, and, and kind of go that route. But there was there were six groups that played our course Sunday mornings when I was up in New York. Everybody that was in those six groups were left-handed. And I, I don't think that any place I've ever been where you have that many groups of left-handed it, it folks. But there's a, you know, a, a family that played in there uh, that made up about seven players in the group, you know, sons, grandfathers, grand, grandkids, so on down the line, uncles all left-handed, so they had obviously had some access to left-handed equipment, and it passed down through generations, so you could you could kind of see that. But a lot of players will play right-handed, even though they're left-handed, you know, just because, you know, equipment and availability. Today, you can pretty much get anything you want. It's the same amount of cost. It's not a special order. It's, you know, very easily accessible. Uh, my wife plays left-handed. Like I said, my, my uncle plays right-handed, but putts left-handed. You know, it's just a matter of preference, but equipment was prevalent, uh, you know, more so for the right-handed golfer way back in the day than, than it was. And, and Jim's actually out here playing this afternoon, so it was good to see him. You know, it's it's interesting, Brian. I am left-handed. My father's left-handed. My older brother is left-handed. And when we're on the golf course, we're all swinging right-handed. Uh, I was telling yep. Anthony, uh, I never saw a left-handed golf uh, club until I was in my 20s. Uh, you know, I didn't even know those things existed. But, you know, years ago, uh, somebody somebody looked at me and said, you throw left-handed, why aren't you hitting left-handed? I'm, I don't know. Well, here, try this. And, and yep. they gave me a baseball bat and said, try to swing left-handed. I'm like, okay. It, it, it's natural. It, it felt natural. So um, when I had one of those old single-blade putters, uh, one of those mm-hmm. old school single blade putters that you can use left handed or right handed. I would I would putt left handed, and and it felt so much better and more natural than if I were to do it right handed. Not that it makes a big difference because I suck on on either direction, but uh, it it felt a lot more natural uh, to putt left handed. And I tried playing a round of golf uh, left handed. Now obviously it takes a a, a lot of of practice to to get that down, but it felt natural, but I never was able to get the clubs. Yeah. And, and that's, and that's a perfect point. And, and I can remember growing up, not seeing a left-handed club, not even a wedge, a putter or any, anything of that sort in the golf shops that, that the courses that I grew up around. And now, you know, if you come in here, you know, for every 10 clubs, we have two left-handed clubs in there, whether it be wedges or woods or fairway woods or hybrids. You know, it's something that we're definitely thinking about come ordering time because you do have, you know, folks that come out and get fitted for lefty in a club. So, you know, it's important for us to be able to stock that and, and cover that demographic of golfers. So, you know, ladies' equipment, senior equipment, and left-handed equipment is, is vitally important. And I think if you if you tag all those, you tag all the bases. And, you know, you, you, you go to a left-hander and you, you talk about Phil Mickelson. Phil Mickelson is a right-handed person. He just plays left-handed because what he was trying to do was mimic his dad swinging the club backwards by looking at him. So they would both take the club back and, and follow through, standing face-to-face. And that's how he learned the game, which is kind of odd that you see a right-handed playing left-handed. So, uh, you know, to each his own. And, and equipment was probably the biggest driver of, you know, getting more folks to play left-handed today because it's just, you know, more so relevant, more so available uh, compared to, to yesteryear. Now let's talk about some things going on at Mill Creek. I saw you on your Facebook that you guys are looking for volunteers for the uh, Junior All-Star event on June 21st through the 25th. Uh, talk about what different things that people can volunteer for and if they're interested, uh, how to go about doing that. Well, there's a myriad of uh, activity and, and shifts that come along with the, uh, the volunteer shifts for the American Junior Golf Association event that we're hosting. Um, it, it goes from you can do live scoring every three holes. The players check in and they have a live scoring component where they'll check in with a volunteer, kind of like what you see on the PGA Tour. There's a person there to, to take their scores, then it hits the, the leaderboard. In their case, it's an online app and an online leaderboard, but they punch them in on these devices. It, it goes right to the leaderboard electronically so you can see where everybody's at in the field. 
they have registration volunteers. They have uh, what they call a water rover, basically running lunches and, and water to the volunteers, as well as players on, onto the golf course. They also have scoring tents, so when the players come in, they, they still have to do the pencil and paper from a scorecard perspective and, and go over the hole by hole, so we'll have some volunteers doing that. And then just player registration and, and driving range check-in. Uh, they have all kinds of activities that if you know if you're interested in volunteering, they can they can call the pro shop here at three three zero seven four zero seven one one two. We'll get you set up with a shift. We have about 150 shifts uh, volunteer needs during the week, and we we usually have all of those covered. And I usually have about 10 or 15 more on a waiting list just in case of emergencies or they need some extra help here or there. So the people of Mahoning Valley have been you know very supportive of the event. Uh, part of volunteering, you'll get a HHEA pin, you'll get a hat, uh, you'll get a lunch while you're on duty. And then if you're a student, either high school or in college, you'll have some community service time uh, that they'll sign off on. And it's it's good for any of your, you know, honor society or any of your organizations in uh, high school or college. So it's a great way to uh, burn up some of that uh, community service time, you know, from a volunteer standpoint by being outside and watching some of the, the world's greatest junior golfers between the ages of uh 12 to 15. So if you have an opportunity or if you're interested and would like to help out, you don't have to have any golf experience whatsoever. Uh, the staff of the AJGA is wonderful at getting everybody you know, well-versed on uh, what their volunteer shifts are and, and, and getting you set up. Uh, we, like I said, we do have shifts all throughout the course of that week and, and, and definitely need some help. So you know, please do, if you're interested, call us because it's, it's an enjoyable week and you get to spend some time out, outside and you're inside the ropes with the kids. Okay, so who's going to be holding up the uh, the big quiet sign? <laughs> well, on, on the last day, they're going to have a few of those, and they also have some, if you remember, going back to the LPGA days, which I did as a kid at Squaw Creek and Avalon Lakes, carrying the sign with the, the leaders and their, how many under they are, and with all the names, they, they have that for the final round. Uh, so I think we're going to do the last six groups of the boys and the last six groups of the girls' division. So we usually have a lot of high school kids that will come out and do that. But, you know, that's 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 all part of the process. We'll have bleachers on 9 and 18 and hole number one and down on the driving range, which I think is neat. You know, being able to go to the range and sit there and watch the kids hit balls, they're just phenomenal golf ball strikers. Uh, they hit the ball extremely well. They're very well-mannered, uh, well beyond their years of uh, 12 to 15 compared to how it was when I was a kid. Uh, very mature. And, uh, you know, just uh, it's, it, it's a fun week, and it's, it's a good week to have, you know, this national tour, you know, here in northeastern Ohio, albeit in Youngstown, but at the Metro Parks here. The families really enjoy it. Uh, it's about a $1.6 million financial impact. You know, that's hotels, that's dining, that's shopping, that's taking part in park activities. We have some concerts. We have some, some other events uh, scheduled for the families when they're here. Last year, we finally got the, the state of Kansas in, so now we can say we have all 50 states covered. We have 27 different countries covered. 98.6% uh, of the, the people that you're going to see play here this week uh, will play at Division One, Two, or Three in, in, in college. And I always ask myself, well, where's the other 1.4%? The other 1.4% is the people that go right from the junior tour right into the LPGA or PGA tour. So... You know, their placement's unbelievable. We had a, a kid win the first two years here. Max Mulligan was his name. Uh, the only back-to-back -back, uh, winner in, PG, in AJ history. Uh, and if you think of Tiger Woods, Phil Mickelson, Lexi Thompson, who played well at the Ladies' U.S. Open this past weekend, Ricky Fowler, Justin Thomas, and, and you know Jordan Spieth and all of these guys, none of them were able to win the same tournament back-to-back. -to -back. Max did that. He, He's got a full ride at Ohio State. He's the one man at Ohio State on the golf team. He's number two in the NCAA for an individual. And, you know, going with the, the trend of, you know, bringing people to your community, we had 13 out of the 14 teams of the Big Ten here represented by their golf team coaches. We had UCLA, Texas, Oklahoma State, Duke, uh, Florida, North Carolina, Youngstown State, obviously, because it's in the backyard. But, you know, probably 70, 80 coaches that will be here during the course of the week recruiting kids, which I find hard to believe is, you know, between 12 and 15, which is usually when they really, you know, try to have them wrapped up or have an eye on who they want to recruit or who they want to offer scholarships to. I just find it, it's, it's hard to be able to recruit someone that's, you know, 12, 13, 14 years old. They haven't even hit high school yet. And, 
you know, all the all the stuff that goes, you know, with maturing through high school and puberty and the whole nine yards. So it's, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's sort of a crowd shoot, but they're all on site. You know, part of this event, we raise money for local charities. You know, year to date, I think we're a little bit over seventy thousand. Uh, that goes for the Mill Creek Metro Park Foundation, which has reinvested back into the facilities here at the Metro Parks, as well as the ACE grant, uh, which is really unique because it gives kids the opportunity that can't afford to play and, and travel to these events, the opportunity to be able to do that, all expenses paid. If they have the uh, playing ability, they'll find a way to get you out there. So it's a, just a great week for golf. There's a junior amateur uh, part of the equation is kind of like a pro-am where you'll get to play with uh, one of the players on Monday uh, in the afternoon and they do a, a charity presentation and, and they play uh, basically Tuesday all the way through Friday. There's two events this year, 278 player fields, which was their way to get around COVID, although the COVID restrictions have been lifted from that aspect, but we will have a little over 250 families here between the 100 player qualifier in the two events at uh, 78 players apiece. So bringing a lot of people to the area to really showcase the Metro Parks in Youngstown in the Mahoning Valley is, is a, a king component of you know why we looked out and why we tried to uh, bring this organization in. And they only do 114 of these uh, worldwide, and, and we have one here in northeastern Ohio. So, you know, very special event and very special event to the community. It's our way of being able to pay back the community that supports us here, you know, albeit through the, the, the tax in Mahoney County, by being able to fill up the hotels and fill up the shopping centers and fill up the local businesses here, too. So it's our way of saying thank you for all that you do for making us function and giving you some money in return with bringing in some of these events with national uh, acclamation. And Father's Day is coming up really soon. You guys are having the Father's Day uh, golf package raffle. The drawing is on Monday, I believe. Talk about uh, well, what's in that package. I know it's a, a high-value package that you could win, and uh, how people can go about uh, entering that, obviously, before the draw. Yes, it's, it's something new that the uh, Metro Parks Foundation is doing. We have a, a foundation that uh, started a little while back and a, a really good uh, development director named Chris Linton. So he's you know, taking up some ideas to promote the park and the golf course and, and some of the things that we have here in the Metro Parks and, and to help fundraise for the foundation. So he came up with the idea of raffling off a foursome. You'll get a foursome of golf uh, with cart, range balls, the whole nine yards. Uh, you'll get lunch at hole 55. And there's some uh, Titleist Pro V's in there as well. There's some shirts in there, some Donna Ross the Nine shirts from the, from the golf shop. Uh, just basically putting a nice golf package, a, a good Father's Day golf package that uh, you have the opportunity of winning. He's got some information on the foundation's website on Facebook, as well as I believe it's I Love Mill Creek Metro Parks.org is our uh, foundation website. If you go there, he's got everything pretty much listed and, and, and all the things that he does from a foundation and a fundraising standpoint. Does a really nice job with that. And, you know, couldn't be more blessed with what he's been able to do. I think when he took over, I want to say three or four years ago, the foundation had about $700,000 in it, and it had stayed that way for a, a little while. And he's come in, and I think he's he's well over 3 or $4 million in, in, in fundraising and grant money and, and so on down the line. So he's, he's really turned the foundation into something, you know, long-term for us. You know, part of, you know, the, the golf course here, we have the golf endowment that we started Two years ago with Mahoning Valley Hospital Foundation and Mike Senchek, you know, the goal was always to be, if for some reason the levy didn't pass, we need something to fall back on. So his, his vision and his site, along with our uh, executive director, Aaron Young, has always been, you know, how do we look down the future if, you know, something hits the fan or we run into trouble? So you have to have a way to be able to function and, and still maintain at a high level. And, you know, part of it is through the foundation and, and fundraising and raising money and, and searching and finding grant money for the, for the Metro Park. So they do a wonderful job. And, and part of it, this, this package, which is pretty cool because it showcases the golf department and, and showcases what we do here on a day-to-day basis in, in a sport that's uh, very fastly flourishing and, and growing, you know, post, post-pandemic and through the pandemic. So, you know, we're excited with where we're headed and, and, and they are too. Brian Tilnard, the uh, guru from Mill Creek, our golfing guru, joining us on the MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning Hotline. All right, it's time to talk about this week's stop on the PGA Tour. 
It's down in South Carolina, the Palmetto Championship at Congaree, uh, Congaree Golf Club in uh, the beautiful community of Ridgeland, South Carolina, where it's going to be humid because it's always humid in South Carolina. Talk a little bit about this golf course, and is it going to be one of those weeks where uh, the winning score is in the high teens, early 20s? Well, I, I think you're right on there. You know, obviously this is a uh, an interesting event because it's a one-year event, you know, very similar to what we saw. Remember the Wyndham when the PGA Tour started up? They had the John Deere that wasn't going to happen in Wisconsin, so you jacked down at Mirfield says you can run your event down here. Wyndham jumped in to sponsor, so they did that one week, and then they went to the Memorial. You know, this is basically in the same boat. It's going to take over and replace the RBC Canadian Open, uh, which has basically been you know, with the logistical challenges related with, you know, crossing the border and the COVID-19 uh, pandemic up in Canada, it really put a damper on this event, and they were reluctant to open, you know, the country up to have travelers come in and out, which I not fully understand. So basically, Congaree jumped in and said, you know, hey, we you know like to take that spot, you know, albeit for a year, we want to get our feet wet. Uh, Congaree's a, a place that in, in 2019, made a hard pitch at the 2025 President's Cup and unfortunately came up a little bit short. Uh, but, you know, part of part of that is the fact that this is our third event in South Carolina, which we have one more with the McGladdery that comes up in uh, September. So, you know, having a fourth event in South Carolina was probably not on the PGA Tour's radar. So, you know, them being able to jump in here and showcase their golf course, I think, which is going to help them, you know, going in the future to get Ryder Cups, to get President Cups and higher level tournaments, I think is, is huge for Congaree. But Congaree is a, uh, a private facility, uh, relatively new, built in 2018. It's number 39 in the Golf Digest Top 100 Golf Courses. You know, albeit this is a one-year run, you know, it's it's a great venue. It's a mix between Kiowa Island, which we saw at the PGA Championship a couple weeks ago. Uh, you know, a lot of Pinehurst-type rooms, a lot of waste area, a lot of brush. So it's a, a combo between Pinehurst and Kiowa Island. you got some ocean feel to it. Uh, you've got some water. You've got some, you know, low trees and, and, and scrub brush. It's your true low country feel. A lot of water, a lot of sand. Obviously, Tom Pazio is their designer. He's the king of sand, and I call waste areas and scrub crush and heavy rough. You know, he, he gives you plenty of fairway to work with, but once you get off of that, there's not much. Uh, so you got to be very careful when it comes to hitting it off the tee. It's a lengthy property. So, you know, just like Kiowa, accuracy is going to be vital this week. You certainly have to have a good short game because the greens are, are, have a lot of subtle breaks to them as well. So you have a lot, have to have a lot of creativity when you're chipping and, and pitching to them to, to get the receptive areas. And, you know, triple, uh, true to a Tom Fazio course, you know, he, he gives you a ton of opportunities to score. So, you know, you're going back to talking about 18 to 20 under. I think you're probably in that window. You know, the, I think the champion this week is definitely going to go low. The weather's going to cooperate. I think you're looking at high 70s, lower 80s. Not a shot of rain this week. Very humid, uh, which you know lowers the ball's flight a little bit because of the humidity and, and being below sea level there. So it's going to play about a club longer than you normally would see on a PGA Tour based on where it's located. But I, I would be certain that you're going to see somebody go north of 18 under. A uh, little known fact that if you ever see the movie Something to Talk About with Julia Roberts, the, the homestead that's on the property there was used in the filming of that movie. So there's a lot of cool little nuances to the history of down south in South Carolina and Beaufort County and, and Pilton Head and that whole little corridor that they call Low Country. So, you know, it's going to be an event that uh, supports the local boys and girls clubs of Hardyville, South Carolina, youth golf instruction, and the Low Country Food Bank. So they have a lot of charity that's involved in this event as well. They're playing for $7.3 million. The golf course is a par 71, which is another reason why you'll see the scores being a little bit lower and the length of the golf course is about 7,700 yards. So it is very healthy from uh, tee to green. All right, we've kept everyone waiting long enough. It is time for this week's Power 5 Sleepers and who you think will take away the trophy this week in the PGA Tour. 
Power five and sleepers this week. You're going to see two big names. They're going to come in at the sleepers and a lot of uh, names that we're kind of familiar with but haven't won very much on the PGA Tour. Starting off at sleeper number one position is Brant Snedeker, obviously a two-time Heritage RBC champion at Hilton Head. You know, he's certainly been under the radar all year. He's starting to play well the last couple months. I wouldn't be surprised to see his name sneak up to the, the leaderboard. Another big name, Brooks Kapka, probably one of the bigger names in the mix this week, you know, prepping for the U.S. Open, still stinging from his loss against Phil at uh, Keough Island just down the road. Uh, he's playing with a little anger. You know, him and Bryson have been feuding, and I think he's uh, put in enough time to play in practice where he's going to, you know, really start concentrating on golf and, and get his game together. I don't know that he'll win this week, but I think he's putting himself in good position as he's, as he's heading into the U.S. Open at Torrey Pines, so I have him at sleeper this week. Coming in at number five, a former NCAA champion that forfeited his opportunity to play in the 2018 U.S. Open and British Open when he was an amateur turning professional, Doc Redman. Uh, he had a, had a lot of close calls, plays well on venues that a lot of tour players will skip, you know, albeit the event in Detroit. Uh, a couple of years ago with the Rocket Mortgage, he kind of led all three rounds and just didn't get it done in the final round. He plays well on under-the-radar events, so I, I think Doc Red, Redman's going to have a good week. And then rounding out our top five this week, four of the last five are going to be non-American players. So I'm going with a lot of Englishmen this week. I think the Americans certainly have their guard down with the U.S. Open on the horizon, so I think you're going to see a lot of... Uh, European tour players and, and players that you see at WGC events uh, tend to do well this week. Ian Polder is going to be in that uh, fourth spot. You know, his last win hasn't been in, until you know 2012, so it's been a while since he's played well. But he's had some close calls the past uh, few weeks of the PGA Tour. Just hasn't put it together for you know more than three rounds. He's, he's been two or three rounds pretty steady all year, making a lot of cuts. Just hasn't gotten it done on Sunday. I think, you know, playing on Bermuda Greens is a big advantage for him. He's, he plays in that area of Florida. He knows Southern golf very well, knows what to do when you're below sea level and, and hit those extra clubs. So I think Ian Polder is going to be a solid at number four. Coming in at number three with eight wins in the professional marks, Tommy Fleetwood is our number three this week. Always a guy that you see on the leaderboard, a guy that probably should have won a heck of a lot more times. You know, this, this, tur this tournament, this golf course reminds me of Shinnecock when they used to have the U.S. Open and a couple of PGA Championships and some events up there during the FedEx Cup playoffs. You know, he was one of those guys that shot 63 at Shinnecock during a U.S. Open, and that place is darn near impossible. So I think he's going to have a lot of holes that are similar in feel to that when he goes to uh, Congaree this week. So I have him as our, our, our number three spot. Number two, another Englishman. The 2020 Arnold Palmer Invitational Champ, Terrell Hatton, uh, plays well on Bermuda Greens. He you know, has a lot of wins overseas with Bermuda Greens and internationally. I think he's you know about ready to jump in the winner circle again, albeit for 2021, and I think he's a formidable candidate. So he's our number two this spot uh, this, this week. And then number one, fellow Englishman, Matthew Fitzpatrick. Six professional wins, a U.S. Amateur Championship. He's averaged a win per year on the PGA or European Tour. He's very accurate off the tee. He has enough length. And more importantly, he hits an abundance of fairways and greens. So he's going to give himself an opportunity. He's been hanging around in some majors. And I think you're going to see him play well this week and next week as he goes into Torrey Pine. So Matt, Matthew Fitzpatrick, the Englishman, is our number one spot rounding out the uh, top five this week. And uh, I'm going to go with your number two. I have him written down already, so I'm not I'm not cherry picking your power five. I promise. Uh, Tyrell Hatton is my pick this week to win, and uh, for for all the same reasons that you put him at number two. I mean, I think he's poised for a very competitive weekend at least, and hopefully for my confidence, that he wins. <laughs> Okay. That's where I think the Arnold Palmer Invitational really elevated his game. It showed him that he could win a major, an invitational event with a very elite field on a big stage. I think that was that's a uh, jumping point for him on really taking his game to the next level to, to just give himself the uh, the can-do attitude of I can I can win at this high level and on on these big stages. All right, Brian, I'm going outside the box. Uh, I've got Lucas Glover winning this event. Uh, and, and he's like 40, 42 or 43 to 1 last I checked. But 
Uh, I have Lucas Glover winning this event because uh, he's from around those parts. Uh, he knows the area quite well. Uh, am I way off on this? If, if I'm not mistaken, I think he may be a member there. So he he's definitely knows the area, and I'm sure he's got a number of reps under his belt there compared to 98% of the field that's playing this week. And, you know, you know, going to your point, you know, having some familiarity with the golf course is a huge advantage this week because it's not a tour stop that they're going to – that they've gone to in the past. It's not a tour stop that they're probably going to go to in the future as it's just a filler for the RBC. So I wouldn't be surprised if you had a guy like that win based on his local knowledge of the golf course or a no-name win this week. And that's why our, our Power 5 wasn't really your household names of guys that have won multiple times. Because I think one of these younger guys like a – Austin Cook or Ben Martin, you know, someone to that caliber can jump through and get their first win on the PGA Tour. Okay, before we let you go, and before actually before we even have you uh, do the tip of the week, we have to bring up what happened last week uh, at the Memorial. Uh, John Rom has a six-shot lead after the third yeah. round, and the the uh, the big wigs down there didn't even bother to tell him in private. They told him in public, hey, uh, you tested positive for COVID. Uh, you got to get out of here. Uh, I thought it was a really bizarre, uh, really bizarre look. Uh, it was not a great look for the PGA. I, I think members of the media, if you put truth serum in them, uh, probably loved it because you got the yeah. uh, the very emotional raw uh, reaction from John Rom. But uh, take us through what happened and and uh, if they could have handled it any better. You know what? That's a it's a tricky slope because it's always going to be a double edged sword. You're you're number one. You're looking out for the well being of everybody else in the field. All the uh, spectators that are down there, the volunteers, the whole nine yards. So, I mean, I understand that end of it. You know, having it done the way that it was handled, it, it could go either way. I mean, you, you have to do what you have to do to, to, to protect everybody. You have you have those uh, tests being done for a reason. And, you know, I, I'm not sure where he could have gone. You know, do they want him to enter the clubhouse? Do they want him to enter the locker room? And, you know, you know how – you can you can pick up this disease. So, I mean, it's kind of like you know, what do you do? You're kind of darned if you do, darned if you don't. And you know, obviously, him not to be not to be able to finish. I mean, he could have shot 74, or 75, and I think still win the golf tournament based on how it how it played out. You feel bad for him, but on the same token, I believe it's the second time he's had this. So, which is which is kind of crazy. And I I guess from you know talking to him afterwards, I guess somebody around him near his inner circle. Had, had caught it and then obviously passed it along to him. So, you know, obviously he needs to get better, and you're definitely on the clock from that event to the U.S. Open. I mean, it's going to be borderline if he's going to be able to play in that, and I'm sure he wants to play in that. I'm sure he would have wanted to have won the Memorial, and he certainly was playing well enough to win that. I thought his statement that he sent out on either his website or Twitter or Facebook I thought he handled it better than anybody. Hey, there's going to be more opportunities, and it's just a you know kind of a bump in the road type of thing, and understandably so. But yeah, I don't know. You're in a catch-22. It, it'd be, it would have been nice to have the cameras not there, <laughs> to not make it so public and you know kind of in your face type type of a deal. But I don't I don't know that they really had the luxury of being able to do anything differently. And obviously, when it comes to medical stuff, I mean. It, have the privacy, you know, of that be front and center, I think is important as well. You know, it's between the player and his family and, you know, how he has to proceed. You know, symptom-wise, it looked like he didn't have any symptoms at all. I mean, he was playing like he had no symptoms of anything, but just being a symptom of having a good golf swing for that week. So you certainly feel bad for him there, but, you know, it, I, I don't know. You know, could they have done it differently? Maybe. But he still... You know, you're trying to block him from the scoring tent. You're trying to block him from the clubhouse. You're trying to block him from the locker room, and you know, if possibly affecting others in there. So, I mean, I, I don't know which which way you go or where you go. I mean, obviously, this, if this was his second time, it's, you would think after the first time he'd get a shot, or I, I don't know, maybe he did because there's some folks that have gotten shots that have gotten it. So, I, I don't know who's to, who's to say or to speculate, but you know, it's just a it's, it's a bad scenario and. 
if I'm him, I'm thinking that I won that event. <laughs> and unfortunately, you know, just couldn't get through with, you know, the way the stipulations and all that stuff are. But you want to protect the field. You want to protect the players, the volunteers, and everybody else that's, that's there because they're the ones that make the tournament function and, you know, won't affect anybody else. So that's, that's important too. And then, you know, for him, it's going to be, you know, hopefully he's better enough for uh, – come around U.S. Open time, which he's got some time, but that's what they say, around two weeks is, is the number. So he's going to be cutting it pretty close. And what is a golf guru without some quality advice? Uh, Brian, we're going to give you your opportunity, like every week, to share your wisdom with this week's tip of the week. Well, I think this tip of the week really relates to you know some of the rough that the players have experienced with the PGA Championship and some of the rough that – Folks up here in the Northeast are experiencing when the conditions are humid, damp. Uh, you're, you're getting some rain. It, you know the, the rough is very thick. It's very deep. Uh, we cut it twice a week here, on, and, and after you cut it the first time, and you get some rain, and you get some you know thunder and the lightning, and the whole nine yards, it gets wet and it just gets thick and gnarly. So it looks like you haven't cut it, but our, you know, I reassure you, our guys here, you know, continue to, to cut and. But you, you'll see this here. You'll see it at any of the area clubs. You'll see it at any of the golf courses that you're playing. The rough is just very healthy till the summer gets here and burns some of the thickness out of it. So players will hit in the rough. They have trouble hitting out of the rough, and we're going to give them some tips on, you know, basically hitting out of the rough, giving yourself some opportunity to be able to score when you put yourself maybe offline off the tee or miss the green, you know, just short of the green. So. The first thing that we want you to think about as a player, number one, you want to take a good look at the lie. All, all basically sides of the golf ball, the front, the back, the, the sides, where's the grass laying, you know, how much grass is going to get caught between the club face and the golf ball. Really try to judge the type of shot you think you know how the golf ball is going to come out. So that's going to be the first thing. If it's a, if it's a lie that's got a lot of grass over top of the ball and it's going to come out muffled, feeling like a marshmallow, you know, it's better off choosing a club that has a lot of loft to just advance it or, you know, get it somewhere where you can get yourself in position to be able to get it up and down. Um, don't try to be the hero. In a lot of these cases, we watch it on the PGA Tour, you know, every given weekend, Saturday and Sunday. These tour players hitting great shots out of rough, and you see the big chunk of grass coming flying up or the fescue that they hit it in. You know, to be able to do that, they have raw power. Those, those guys hit you know, 500 shots a day. So it's basically trying to stay within your means, you know, trying to, to be conservative and, and play it safe to an extent. And if the lie's poor, you, you want to grab something and, you know, take your punishment, take your medicine, and, and, and kind of move on, live to see the next shot. Otherwise, if you have a poor lie and you're pulling out a hybrid or a fairway wood, you may advance it 10 or 15 yards. Not that you hit it bad. You hit it in the center of the club face. There was so much grass that knocked the – you know, the golf ball back down as opposed to helping you lift it out. And, you know, between that, you know, you know, trying to have enough power to cut through thick grass, a wood or a hybrid may not be the, the ideal scenario. So club selection is going to be the key. You know, judging how much grass you think is going to get popped between the club face and the ball is where you're at. You know, if it's an iron, you know, the grass will still have that grab. So you're going to use a, something, a, an extra club or two in loft. So if I have, say, 100 yards, and I would normally hit a gap wedge 100 yards, that's my go-to club, I will take something a little bit more in loft, but maybe it's a, a 56, knowing that when I hit that shot out, I'm going to use the bounce of the club, the sole of the club, to get that grass to clear out, to get me through, knowing that the ball is going to come out very low, because that's the tendency of, of hitting a shot out of the rough. The ball will come out low, and it's going to come out with a lot of overspin on it or top spin. So when that ball hits, it's going to jettison forward. So it's not going to be like your gap wedge that you'd hit out of the fairway or sand wedge you'd hit out of the fairway that you can stop rather quickly or spin it back when you're on the fairway and you have a good lie and, and you're able to pinch the ball. So we want you to loosen up your grip a little bit. I think that's the biggest key, a little bit lighter grip pressure. That way that leading edge can kind of, can kind of, kind of work underneath the golf ball a little bit better. Trust your swing. Make a good impact. You know, Pass through the golf ball. And I think the, the next biggest key is after you've made impact in connection with the golf ball, a nice high finish. The higher you finish, the higher ball flight that that's going to come out of the rough. And I think that that's you know, hugely important as well. We want to have a lot of height. 
We want it to be able to hit and obviously run up because it's going to have the tendency of coming out hot uh, and have a lot of running and a lot of overspin to it. So I, if I, I think if you do those things and you know try not to be the hero and, and play a little bit more conservative, give yourself an opportunity to have a chip on a nice, good, clean surface to get it up and down as opposed to have to hit two or three more shots out of the rough. Same way as if you're you know 200 yards out. And, you know, normally you'd be left four iron or five iron or three iron would be your club. You know, take a seven, take an eight, hack it out, get it to the, the short grass, give yourself an opportunity to where it's not going to be so penalizing for you. But, you know, judging the lies, the, the biggest key, and then hitting a shot that's going to give you the, the biggest impact of being able to get it up and down. Uh you know, don't be hitting it out of the rough over a bunker or over water because you know the ball is going to come out lower and it's going to come out running a little bit more. Take your medicine when you have to and, and, and play a little bit more conservative. But that's how you manage yourself out of uh, a lot of heavy rough and, and lies that aren't uh, very conducive if you hit it offline from a tee shot perspective. Now, Brian, you talked a little bit about a high loft wedge. Explain what you what you mean by high loft wedge. Any Anything that's got a lot of loft to it is going to help you get the golf ball into the air. So when you come through an impact, even though, your say, your pitching wedge would be, say, 50 degrees, 48 degrees, when you're making contact, that grass between the club face and the ball will have the tendency of shutting that face down a little bit, which is why the ball is going to come out so low. So at impact, we're probably going to be about 45, 44 degrees. So that, that's where the lowness comes out. But, you know, if you were to take your 7-iron, and, and hit through that grass, it's going to feel like you're hitting a five iron through grass like that. So, you know, being able to increase the loft or taking a club higher in number, I think, is the biggest key. So if it's a pitching wedge, hit a gap wedge. If it's a gap wedge, hit a sand wedge. Uh, you know, playing to the point where you're using that loft to get yourself from tee to green in better position is going to be vital to you being able to eliminate hitting another shot from the rough or another two shots from the rough. Excellent advice as always, and uh, you know we're one week closer to the U.S. Open. Uh, I, I noticed that Jason Kokrak is uh, doing the two weeks off and get ready for the U.S. Open. Is if if you were to, uh, to uh, give advice to uh, Jason, is that something that you would have uh, you would have said, "Hey, do that"? Because you know, two weeks ago he won. Uh, he didn't go to the memorial. Uh, he's not going to uh, Congaree, and he's he's hanging out until the U.S. Open. Is is that uh, wise, or is is that something that is well thought out, plan wise? You know what I've I've seen. You know his action the last couple. I don't know a couple months on the PGA Tour. It kind of seems like he's playing two on, two off, two on, two off. So I think if he's, he's sticking with his plan, I think it's good for him. You know, obviously we, we picked him a couple of weeks ago and just thought that he was he was ready and just looked good. Um, I could see the same thing going into Torrey Pines at the U.S. Open with, you know, how he's practicing, how he's preparing. Although I did read a, a article in uh, Men's Health the last couple of days and got a chuckle out of it. It, it said, you know, it, you know, what are you doing, you know, winter winnings or whatever, and what are you doing, like, during your off weeks? So you, I guess he was helping a buddy mulch his yard. So I'm like, <laughs> I almost started laughing when I heard that. But that's it, something he would do. I mean, it, it's definitely something he would do. And it's like, yeah, don't injure your back as, you, as you're going into the last half of the year and you've got a shot at Ryder Cup. And, you know, being in that top 20, which he's number five in the FedEx Cup points uh, standing, so – you, know, you, you just look at that and laugh, and you know, he's, he's talking about bourbon in there. He's talking about you know helping his buddies during the off weeks, and doing yard work, and all this stuff. But, I mean, he, at the end of the day, we're all human. We all we all do that. And we all like to do that. It's nice to get on a, a mower and put your headphones on and go out and mow your lawn. It's it's a decompression time. So, you know, tour players are no different. They like to do and have a routine at home when they're there, and, and if he's part of it. Obviously, he can afford to have a lawn crew come in and do pretty much whatever he wants to his yard, but or you know helping out a friend or whatever is, is, is pretty cool. But uh, he seems to have a winning formula. You know, two weeks on, two weeks off, and it's it's doing him well up to this point. And you know, hopefully, he'll continue to do so as we hit the latter half and the FedEx Cup playoffs. And the, you know, we've got the U.S. Open, our our third of four majors, along with uh, the British Open coming up in July. You know, before we really hit the uh, FedEx Cup playoffs come September and October, and you know, you're talking Ryder Cup and President's Cup and points and everything else. So, 
he's in, he's certainly in good position. But you'd like to see him play a little bit more. But he has his he has his formula where he's going to be at his best physically and mentally, and you know has his time to rest up and, and practice and, and work on mechanics when he's at home. So I'll I'll kind of go with it from there and, and, and see where he's at. Well, and Torrey Pines is the uh, spot for the U.S. Open, and, and I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, Torrey Pines is out in Southern California. Uh, isn't that an area where uh, Jason has performed quite well? Jason's played well there. He obviously heading to the San Diego area. They've done some modifications to that golf course. It's a little bit different. That's the course that Tiger Woods and Phil Mickelson grew up on as, as juniors and high school players and got to play a lot of golf there. They've done some reconstruction. I think Reese Jones went in there, I want to say, three or four years ago, changed both the north and the south course. Very similar structure to here at, at the Metro Parks. They have a north and a south course where they have a, a PGA Tour event. They've lengthened the holes. They've repositioned some of the tee boxes uh, for U.S. Opens and major championships, and it just plays a little bit differently than it was intended and designed. It's a municipal golf course owned by the city which I think is pretty cool, albeit a little bit uh, steeper in price. I think it's about uh, 300 bucks to play there compared to our 36 bucks if you're a resident of Mahoney County and, and 28 as a, as a senior. So it's a little bit higher from that end of it. But they have two championship uh, PGA Tour-style golf courses that are you know, 74, 7,500 yards now. But he's historically played well on the West Coast at Riviera. Uh, just you know, closer to LA and in, in Hollywood, and I think that you know, with his good play there, he's got some great uh, mojo to to call upon based on you know how he plays Bermuda and the Zoya rough that they're going to see out there when they do hit Torrey Pines. I just think he hits it extremely well, not only long off the tee, but he's always very accurate. Hits a lot of fairways. Uh, continues to play well off the tee, puts himself in good position where he can attack. He can attack a lot of long par fours similar to what he did, uh, you know, picking up his win. They had a lot of 450, 480-yard, 500-yard par fours down at Colonial. And I think you're going to see a lot of that when it comes to U.S. Open time, and it's the person that can get it up and down and hit, a, and hit an abundance of greens. But if you want to hit a lot of greens, you have to hit a lot of fairways. And if you hit a lot of fairways, you're going to give yourself a lot more opportunities than half the players in that field. So, you know, I, I think with his, his tee ball and his straightness off the tee, I think that's really going to lead him into a strong finish come Tory Pines time. Years ago, I had uh, the, the now deceased Jerry McGee on my show on Terrestrial Radio, and, and I asked him, uh, what's the ceiling with Jason? And he had said long before Jason won his first event, if he is able to play to his potential, he could be a top five player on the PGA Tour. Uh, and isn't it interesting right now, uh, if he's not a top five player, he's pretty damn close. He's number five right now on FedEx Cup. There's, there's no question about it. Jerry was spot on when he, when he said that. He certainly has a ton of talent. And, and I'll, I'll give you this little tidbit. The, when I was at Avalon Lakes as the head professional there in the early 2000s, the back of the driving range was about 320, 340 yards. He's the reason there's nets at the back of the range. And he was in like eighth grade or a freshman in high school. So he was booming it then with equipment that's not as good as the equipment that they have now. So that just goes to show you how long Jason was you know, back in eighth grade, ninth grade, 10th grade, and just how well he hit the ball. He's very accurate. And I, I can remember being on the, the back tees of number six, which is the par five, and watching – you know, him hit from where the tee box was and either flying him or bouncing him into the net. So he's, he's extremely talented. It was always very accurate off the tee, and I, I think that that's a, it, that's a great formula. You know, any time that you're playing at the professional level, especially on the PGA Tour, you have to be very accurate because you're going to give yourself a lot better opportunity for scoring to hit greens than hitting it out of the rough. Now, he certainly has the power to get out of it, but hitting from the uh, the fairways a lot easier and being able to spin the ball and get the ball to stop on the green, especially when it comes to major championships when the greens are firm and they're rolling at 13 or 14 on the stint meter. So he certainly has a huge advantage, and he's riding a lot of momentum you know, when he comes back here in another week. You talk about the way he hit when he was in eighth grade, a freshman in high school. When you, I mean, And then you talked earlier about how kids are getting recruited at 12, 13, 14, 15 years old. Is that kind of the age where you can start to see if a golfer has it or doesn't? Or, or are there some late bloomers that can have it at 18 or 19 and all of a sudden they, they click? Um, or is it usually just between the ages of 
you know, 11 and 16, you can really tell this guy's got got the stuff. You, you could tell it between the age of 12 to about 15 or 16. However, a lot of stuff happens when you hit high school. Um, you know, just the, the time and the effort and the practice that you put in has to still be there. And, you know, obviously, you know, girls are part of that and doing – clubs and organizations in high school and academics is part of that too. So those are all things that sort of slow your practice time down. So if you're organized and you manage your time wisely, Jason certainly did that because he was a really good student in school. And he, he tells you he wasn't, but he was a good student at school, went to JFK. So there's a, a, a standard there, went to Xavier. So it's not easy to get in those schools. But I mean, you can tell the, the people that have it, you know, Jason, you could tell you knew he was going to have something special. You didn't know what level it was based on what he was going to be able to put in time-wise. Uh, Gianna Clement is another one, a, a girl that's uh, from Warren that's played well nationally. You could tell mechanic-wise she's there. Mentally, she's there. She's got the time and the effort to put in. Um, and then you got cases like, you know, Ben Curtis. Ben Curtis, I played with junior golf, you know, here and there. You know, he was a good junior player not a great junior player and then he was a good you know collegiate athlete you know not a great collegiate athlete but as soon as he graduated Kent State just a light switch flipped and he got really good I mean really good and obviously to win you know a handful of times on the PGA Tour win the British Open and and to play as well as he you know played throughout his career to be able to retire three or four years ago I mean he's got a kid playing in our U.S. kids event He's, he's been up here very accessible. Is going to do some things with uh, Jenna Carsmere at the Eastwood Mall, with the indoor golf place, and, and put a golf academy and stuff up there. So he's a very nice person, and but very different from where Jason was and where Gianna Clement was, and you know some of the other local kids, you know from our area that have been at that upper echelon level. But you can you can tell if they have it or if they don't. I mean they they certainly stand out. And if you look at, you know, the team that he played on at JFK, he got a lot of good players. They went to state, I think, every year that I was there. And I think they won it, or he won it, I think, two or three times as an individual. He had a lot of good players on his team, and then he was head and shoulders above those players. So, I mean, you got a lot of good players that could play Division One golf and went and played Division One golf off of that high school team. But you could just tell his bar was a little bit higher, and he was just a little bit better. Made more putts, chipped a little bit better than everybody else, hit more greens, hit more fairways. And I think that, you know, if you, if you have that and you have that ability to basically give up a lot and sacrifice a lot, um, I, I think it, it, it means a lot. I mean, you know, playing golf, very good. You have to hit a lot of balls. You're on your own a lot. You're sacrificing your friends. You're sacrificing going to the festival, going to – this party or this guy's house or vacation or, you know, family reunion, all of the little stuff you're sacrificing to, to get better at your sport, to, to get better at doing what you're doing. And Jason did that. I mean, he was there every single day on the putting green, chipping and putting, playing golf, not only at Avalon Lakes, because they remember there, they remember at uh, Trumbull. So he played there quite a bit and, and playing the courses that they would have played in high school you know, getting practice rounds and reps and getting yardages and stuff down. You're, there's a lot that goes into it, and there's a lot of sacrifice. I mean, it's, you know, you're not dating very many people because you're busy doing what you're doing and you don't have time to put in. But it's, you know, it comes down to, at the end of the day, what do you want to do? And this is the path that you have to go to get to that level. Um, Kelly Capps, another one, played on the LPGA Tour. She went to Boardman, was, a, I think, division I want to say Division Two national champion at Methodist, one or two years. She's in their Hall of Fame. She's in Boardman's Hall of Fame. Same thing. She she played around when I was playing as a junior, and she would come out and practice at Hubbard and take lessons off a guy by the name of Dave Collar, who I took lessons off of. And you could just tell, you know, she had it, but she was there practicing all day from seven eight o'clock in the morning and would leave at five six o'clock in the evening. And it was every single day that she was home on break from Methodist or every single day from high school. She would drive out there, Dave would work with her, and she would uh, she would play golf. But it's that commitment. I mean, it, it takes a lot of commitment, a lot of dedication. Um, and, you know, few people want to put the time and the effort in. And, you know, to, to be at that level, you have to. And it's probably the same with every single sport across the board. And you have to put the time and the effort. You have to shoot the foul shots to be a good basketball player. you got to practice 
fielding to be a good baseball player and, and practice batting, you know, every minute of the day, you know, to get good and, and get better and, and to be able to, to react to what you're being thrown into. So golf's no different. I will say, going back to the left-handed thing from earlier, I think the only thing that left-handers have a huge advantage is in bowling. They got the left side. Not too many people use the royal, but uh, you know, coming full circle on, on today's show, the, the lefties were definitely shut out from a golfer's perspective back when I was younger. But it's uh, definitely flipped the switch, and it's nice to bring them back in. But you know, being committed to the game of golf, I think is, is right-handed, left-handed, or so on down the line. And Brian, there's another name that I wanted to throw out there. Uh, he won the Ohio High School State Championship in uh, Division. F- Four, if I'm not mistaken, Jared Wilson uh, from Columbiana, two-time Ohio High School State champion. Uh, he is now a junior pl- playing golf at Kent State. I think he, he was supposed to go to the Carolinas. Uh, Wake Forest. Uh, yeah, he, he, he was he was in yep. the uh, he was in the ACC in the Carolinas at Wake Forest. Transferred uh, to Kent State. He tried to uh, get on the uh, U.S. Open. Tried to get a spot at the Springfield Country Club in Ohio. Unfortunately, uh, he, he fell a few shots short. But there's another kid that uh, I think everyone probably needs to keep their eye on. He has it. You know, I, I've seen him take lessons off of Andy Santor when he was here. He definitely has the ability, and he's good. South Paul, just a good player. And you can tell. Right? Another, another guy that puts the time and the effort in and is at that level. So it, it, it takes time, effort, dedication, and a lot of sacrifice. Not with your family, you're not with your girlfriend, you're not uh, doing too many things with your friends. So if you put the time and effort in, you're going to be very good at what you're doing. Like you said, it's with every sport. I mean, you ask uh, any Division One athlete, they probably didn't have your quote-unquote normal high school experience because they were out on the field, nope. they were out in the court, they were you know putting in the work. So you gotta you got to look at yourself and say, what do you want to sacrifice and how good do you want to be? 100%. Brian, always a pleasure. Look forward to catching up with you uh, next week. We will talk about the U.S. Open, and we will talk about how a normal Joe can qualify for the U.S. Open because it's the only major in which normal Joes like myself, if I were any good at golf, uh, could (laughs) qualify and actually be... Uh, rubbing elbows with the best of the best of the best. It's, it is possible. You just have to have one hell of a good game in order to qualify. Uh, uh, the, uh, the the movie that Kevin Costner was in, Tin Cup, uh, that, that's a great example. I, I think they Hollywoodized a little bit, uh, but it's a great yep. example of how a normal Joe uh, can qualify for the U.S. Open, and I think that's what makes the U.S. Open so special. Nope, I agree with you 100%. One of the uh, special events, obviously, a, a major, and, and to be able to have that here in the United States is spectacular. And the, the history of, of the game, and Francis we met being an amateur winning that, and, you know, the greatest game, probably one of the best movies from a golf perspective that shows you where golf started and where it came from and how it's changed and transitioned and, and be able to get amateurs and normal people into an event where you're playing with the best in the world, the elite, is, is pretty neat. I uh, will look forward to uh, talking about that next week and get some more tips and handicap the uh, U.S. Open field as well. Always a pleasure, sir. You got it. One of my favorite events of the year. All right. I will look forward to speaking with you next week, Brian. You got it. Have a good week, guys. Right. Thank you. You as well. Brian Tolnar, our uh, golfing guru over at Mill Creek. Man, what a great event they're going to have. And a lot uh, to digest over that segment with Brian Tolnar. Yeah. We talked about so much. We talked about what's going on this week at Mill Creek Park, how you can volunteer there. I feel like we talked to him for for uh, three hours, but we only talked to him for about uh, an hour. Yeah, so, about an hour. Uh, a lot it, of stuff. A lot of stuff going on over at Mill Creek and uh, still looking for volunteers for the... Uh, the Junior Golf Association. Yep, and yep. I um, want to remind people that the uh, raffle for the uh, Father's Day golf package is available. The draw is Monday, so if you want, uh, if you want to to get that package, it's a four hundred and fifty dollar value, uh, and all you have to do is donate a little bit of money to the Mill Creek Foundation. Uh, you can go on Brian Tolnar's Facebook. He shared. I think he was right. I think it's I Love Mill Creek Metro uh, is the Facebook page, 
and you can get to their website and all the information on how to enter that raffle. Yeah, see, that's that's what I'm talking about because my dad is. Uh, I've mentioned this. My dad got a knee replacement for the sole purpose that he wanted to continue golfing. This guy is crazy for golf. Uh, he's out on the golf course two, three, four times a week. Uh, he's well into his 80s, and he just absolutely loves to play the game of golf. And um, that would be an unbelievably great gift for any uh, father or anyone uh, who's in your life that happens to love the game of golf. It's a great Father's Day gift. So uh, certainly take advantage of that because you know you're going to get some good stuff over at Mill Creek. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they got some good stuff over there. So, three three zero eight eight six zero eight one three. The MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning Hotline open for business. Uh, I, as he was going through his sleepers and whatnot, I I had made my picks and I was like, hmm, okay. So do I have to change this? Do I have to keep this? I had to. I kept all of you, this. Yours came out of the the left field with. Uh, uh, wow! Well, I, I had the Lucas Glover. Lucas that, Glover. That, he he is a member of that of that uh, place. Donald's long lost son. Donald. Uh, yeah, yeah. It, he's going to be lethal weapon four uh, when it's all said and done. Uh, you know, he he's going to. Uh, He's going to sit back and go, uh, I, uh, I'm i going to hoist the whatever the hell you get at Congaree. Danny Glover, sorry. Yeah. I'm done. I, I, going to find angels in the, in the 18th hole? Yeah, pretty much. He's, he's going to find an angel in the uh, 18th hole, uh, right in the cup, where the ball goes flying in from 200 yards. <whistles> right in the cup. There's an angel in my Coke. Uh. <laughs> you said on Al. Who's Al? Oh Lord. Oh jeez. Palmetto Championship at Congaree. Uh, that is out in uh, South Carolina, and uh, it should be an awesome tournament. And like I said, I'm going with a guy that knows the course better than anyone on that tour this weekend. Now, having said that, now that I've picked him, he's probably not even going to make the cut because that's how I roll. Uh, we'll take a time out, be back with more. Stick around. It is a Wednesday edition of Running Point on YSNlive.com. Hello, I'm Greg Burbick with G. Burbick Farms. For the last 100 years, my family has farmed in the Columbiana and Mounting counties. I began raising cattle in 1996 with the goal of providing a better product for you and your family on the dinner table. Our grass-fed and grain-supplemented black Angus beef were raised with no hormones, steroids, or antibiotics. We are known for our hometown-friendly service and incredible-tasting products. We are locally owned and have customers across the tri-state area. Our products go from our farm to your family. Stop by our farm on New Buffalo Road or visit us on the web at gburbickfarms.com. Don't forget to like us on Facebook. G. Burbick Farms, it just tastes better. This is Tommy Clem, owner of WRS Insurance Solutions. WRS Insurance Solutions is a local independent agency that specializes in life, Medicare, long-term care, and disability products. Call us at 330-953-3722 or visit us at wrsinsurancesolutions.com to learn more. Good luck to all the student athletes in the Valley. If you're looking for a quality pre-owned vehicle, why shop anywhere else but Tri-State Ford? Choose from our great selection of pre-owned vehicles. Plus, we've got you covered with our exclusive Tri-State Ford Advantage. It includes a 10-year, 200,000-mile warranty with your pre-owned vehicle and much more. Come see why so many customers from the Tri-State area buy their pre-owned vehicle at Tri-State Ford. Customer focus, community driven. Tri-State Ford East Liverpool or visit TriStateFord.net. No matter what the weather, be prepared with a reliable, efficient, rude gas furnace or air conditioner from MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning. Call your energy efficient expert, MP Vivo, today for a free estimate. Here at MP Vivo, we rely on rude, and so should you. It's storm season. I think we're under the gun for some heavy storms over the next couple of hours. And Storm Tracker 21 is ready. This is probably the one we're keeping a closer eye on. On air. 
and locally we're going to have a lot of eyes on our area. Online. All right, let's talk high risk future cast and the timing of this weather. On social media and on our app. Rain will come and go tomorrow. There'll be some dry intervals. Stay ready with Storm Tracker 21. A severe weather threat now through around sunset this evening. My Family Insurance knows the importance of a great team. Our team continues to grow to help you with your Medicare and retirement needs. The annual election period is October 15th through December 7th. Now's the time to make sure your plan continues to meet your needs for the upcoming year. Call today. Sixty years ago, Baird Brothers Fine Hardwoods began with three siblings, a handset sawmill, and a few local orders. And while business has certainly changed over the years, what has not are our principles of hard work, craftsmanship, and commitment to quality. At Baird Brothers, we're proud to put our name on the products we create, from moldings and doors to flooring and lumber. Thank you for 60 great years. We look forward to 60 more. Baird Brothers, for the place you love. Welcome back to a Wednesday edition of Running Point. Ron Potesta with you alongside Anthony Hartwig. The MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning Hotline open for business. 330-886-0813. Uh, here we are in the, uh, what is this now, the uh, second week of June. And uh, this coming Friday will mark two, seven, it'll be 10 weeks from uh, Thursday will be the start of the 2021 high school football season. Stop. You're skipping summer. I, I, I know. Like I know. I, I don't want to skip like, summer. Like, but I love football, but it also means, hey, cold weather's coming. Yeah, exactly. By like week four, you're going to need a coat out in the, co uh, in the football games. I'm not ready. No, neither am I. That's, Stop it. Yeah. But... It's it's coming, it's, you know. You, on the horizon, you can see this nice little wave, no, no. and then it's, the wave is getting a little horizon. bit bigger. And you know, it's much like the Jaws theme, where we don't hear the. No, you're not getting you're not getting that, but it's you see a nice little wave and on the horizon, and then it gets a little bit bigger and bigger, and all of a sudden you're getting uh, you're getting crashed uh, with high school football. Uh, by the way, um, man, we're gonna have some fun with that this year. Uh, I think so. Yeah, so many questions. Can at the top of the list can Springfield three peat and go to the uh, go to the state championship game for a third straight year? Can uh, they like? And, I mean, and can they, they were so close last and, year. And can they get the the uh, gold trophy instead of the silver trophy uh, in 2021? And we'll see. We'll we'll see what uh, what transpires. Uh, Lord knows they got a lot of people back, uh, and and I believe. We get to have, or did we, or was it last year where everyone was told what division they are? I know it's every two years you get you get put in a division and it lasts for two years. And I'm not sure if that was done in 2019 or if it was done before 2020. Well, Springfield did it in divi the same division for two years. I don't know if that means it changed, but it definitely means that. But I, didn't, didn't Mooney move divisions last year? Mo Mooney went from Division Four to Division Five, but I don't know if that was the first year that they were Division Five, or if this was the second year. Uh, I, I want to say. I, I want to say that they did the divisions uh, this past year. You know, it's great. We have time to figure it out because it's summer. Oh. Yeah, boy, no kidding. No kidding. All right. Uh, divisional breakdowns 2019-2020. All right. And then they had divisional breakdowns 2020-2021. Uh, All right. 2019-2020. 
uh, your football breakdown was 116 and less was Division 7. 117 to 157 uh, was 6. 158 to 207 was 5. Uh, 208 to 268 was 4. 269 to 375 was 3. 376 to 590 was 2. And 591 and above uh, was Division 1. But now let's go to breakdowns in uh, Division 2020-2021. It's um, yeah, it's a little, uh, it's a little less in uh, in, in 2020, 2021. So I'm going to be real curious as to uh, if anyone moves up or down, because I know Crestview and South Range are two of the, or at least Crestview is smaller than South Range now. South Range started to explode here uh, not too long ago. But uh, Crestview was always flirting with the 163 limit, which is what Division 5 is, uh, that they would be moved down to Division 6. Because I think that last, uh, last number was like 166, 165. That's what, where they were. And the cutoff uh, for the lowest you can be in Division 5 is 163. So there, there are teams that could go into Division 6 well, or move up a division. You look at uh, Canfield, not not in football, but in the girls' sports, volleyball, basketball, they are the smallest Division 1 team in the state of Ohio. Yeah. So they're on that little, like, just begging that they can Lose a couple of kids. Move down. Yeah, and if you and can move down to D2. Like one of the biggest schools in D2. Yeah, and then all of a sudden, you now you're looking at, oh, man, now, now we have uh, – now we have a shot here because yeah, yes. girls basketball D one it's three thirty five and up, and Cre- and uh, Canfield is like three thirty eight, three thirty nine, something like that. Where if you can get five kids less, then <laughs> no, no, all of a sudden you're that. you're one that of those. Was a joke. Well, no, schools are not really. Uh, yeah, they're so not doing that. Yeah. But <laughs> but if but if somehow the numbers were adding but to if the where bars it's get raised, that's yeah. what they want. Yeah, if the number was 334, well, 334 is the highest Division II school. Right. So that's not too shabby. Not too shabby at all. So that's that's a girls' basketball. By the way, boys' basketball, it's 352 and up. Uh, you're considered Division I. Not too shabby, Abby. Indeed. Indeed. So uh, I'll be looking forward to, uh, to seeing uh, those – divisional breakdowns for the school year uh i'm not sure when this particular one came out i don't have a uh, i don't have a date on this but the uh divisional breakdowns 2020 2021 year uh, came out uh, well before school started so i'm going to be real curious to see um when these uh divisional breakdowns uh come out so that'll be uh, I'll be real curious about that because uh, I'm not sure if we're going to uh, see some some schools move up a division, some schools move down a division. Uh, you know, Springfield uh, they've always been teetering between D seven and D six. Uh, so I'd be curious to see where they are with uh, with that. So it, this will be this will be interesting to see what happens. I think so. Yeah. I uh, I look forward to that, but like like we said, it's all about the summer right now. Yeah, come on. Yeah, it's all about the summer. One eye on football, but it's all about the summer. We got a lot of summer league games to do, and and no, I'll be I at, have scrappers I'll be at games to do Park this weekend for softball, travel right. softball. Like it goes right into it. Like there you let's go. go. Okay, so who are who are some of the travel softball teams? I mean, do they have a league like the B League in, in baseball? No, it's not the not not like the same organized. Uh, but 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 um, so McCoon Park this week is a D one showcase, and there are plenty of teams with with uh, YSN players on it. Thunder Elite, um, you know the U Triple S A teams always have plenty. The Ohio Lasers. Um, Outlaws, uh, Bree Kohler plays on an outlaw team for Di Marini Young. Um, so, a lot of local talent going to be at McCoon Park uh, this week, and and I'm going to be 
watching and, and taking in some stuff. Now, is that like the AAU basketball where yeah. you really don't have a league per se, but you're in a bunch of tournaments and right. you can... Right, exactly. There, There's a tournament and like on Friday and Saturday, it'll be a bunch of pool play. Sunday, they'll bracket the teams and they'll play for the tournament championship. And McCune Park has a number like of softball 11 fields. Field, 11 yeah. fields. So all those fields are going to be are going to yeah. be used. Yeah. And you know, and we've been talking a lot about this. Uh, we need a we need a park uh, that's going to have multiple fields and lights all over the place, <laughs> or at least lights in one half of those or half. facilities. You're getting kind of. I was. I'd just settle for one. Or where you just have the main event game on the one field with the uh, with the stands, kind of like Bob Seen uh, Bob Seen Park uh, right. before they before they built the second and third field. You had the gorgeous field with the lights. Uh, now the field two was was put in pretty qu- pretty quickly after field one, but you know the park it, it, you still. You, Back when that when that field was made, Pemberton and Oakland and a couple of other places in Youngstown were still being used. And then Bob Seen Sr. Uh, wanted to make another another uh, field, so he had plenty of real estate uh, across the street they from Astro did, Shapes. By the way, yeah, they still, still do. Room there. Oh, absolutely. If there they is. wanted to, they could make a softball little complex. And it could all be a Bob Seen Park. Yeah, they. I mean, they would rack in because. Yeah, they they still have plenty of real estate now. As good as the three fields are, Field Two by far and away is the field that loses the foul balls because it's directly in front of Astro Shapes, oh. and I don't know how many foul balls go back into uh, into the Astro Shapes. A uh, little parking area where all the steel pipes are located. Well, we're not getting that. Yeah, you're not getting those foul balls. I mean, you get them back because so. the Scene family owns Astro Shapes, so you are getting those balls back. It's just you're not getting them back immediately because uh, nobody's going to jump the fence and go into uh, Astro Shapes. <laughs> every and, team and has, find a ball. Every team has a team runner. Their job is to when the foul ball goes back there. Go get it. <laughs> yeah, well, there's... Listen, if they don't go back into that, in, into Astro Shapes, and it goes across the street up against the fence, get your butt out there and find it. Team go runner? get it. Yeah, go get it. Jimmy? Yeah. You know what to do. I, I make it a point, uh, especially when I'm umping the plate, because the home plate umpire has all the power. I make it a point before the game to remind the guys, hey, look, um, you only give us a certain amount of baseballs. This is a, a, a field in which baseballs go to die in uh, the Astro Shapes parking lot. So the ones that don't, make sure that you're getting them back as quickly as you can. Uh, you know, If you're the first base uh, dugout, you're holding down that area. Third base dugout, you're holding down that area. Get your runners out there. Get the guys to grab that baseball. Because uh, when you're playing on field two, a lot of those foul balls go into astro shapes. You got to make sure you are still playing with as as many baseballs as as humanly possible. Uh, so those that don't go into astro shapes uh, uh, parking or the uh, the area where the steel pipes are, you got to get those foul balls back at, as quickly as possible because you lose a lot of foul balls in that uh, in, during the course of that game. I imagine uh, that there were there are probably several instances where you're like, I got two left. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> let's go. <laughs> oh, absolutely, and and there, trust me, Anthony. There's that instances where I like got no balls left. Let's uh, bring some more baseballs out here. Oh, I, I I know you guys get a certain amount every single year, but when you're playing on field two, you can expect to lose about a dozen baseballs. Uh, during the course of the day, because a lot of those foul balls go back into the uh, into the parking lot or into the area where the steel pipes are at at Astro Shapes. It's uh, it's tough. I've always been because like baseball, you'll see them change balls almost 
Sure. Every other pitch. And it doesn't happen a lot in softball. So no. I'm guessing you go through a lot more baseballs than you see a softball team go through. Well, I mean, if you foul a ball off in softball, does someone go but run down it, and, and get it? it? throws it right back to the pitcher and they yeah. just keep using that ball. Okay. And if a ball gets fouled off in baseball, it says, give me a new ball, here you go. Well, Most I, of the time, it, right? It, yeah, but if, if it's going to be fouled off in the field of play reasonably in the field of play or near a dugout where a, a coach picks up the ball, tosses it to his pitcher or the uh, the opposing pitcher, okay, no problem. But if it's a foul ball uh, down the left field line, you don't want the left fielder to run over, grab the ball, and throw the ball back in and then run back to his position. You just sit back and go, okay, eat it, give me another ball. The catcher gets another ball from the home plate umpire. And then the runner will – Scoot down there and and get the ball. All right, got to get the helmet on. Uh, but you run down there and get the ball. Yeah, you, you, no, you, you don't want that. Kenny, you good? Yeah, you, you good. don't want that. Yeah, right. uh, they killed Kenny. <laughs> no, no, no. All right, give me. Now you got two balls to get. No, oh, Lord. Up. Let's go. Yeah, yeah, get up. Right, it, it, shake it off, good Jimmy. Throw some dirt on it, Jimmy. You're fine. <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah, that's not good. We're terrible. Not good. Uh, but and the other, the other part of uh, Bob Scene Park, and it doesn't happen very often. Uh, when I when it does, I yell goal. You know, the tarp down the left field line. Right. The uh, it, you, ball goes into a tarp. You just throw your arms up and you go goal. That happens at uh, South Range Softball. I mean, they have the big tarp down left field. And sometimes the ball goes in there, and it's like it's, you're not going to tell a player to climb into that and no, try to get a ball. No. No, so the you monster just get, ate you just, it. You just get it after the game. Yeah, exactly. Or and you wait until it rains, the, and then you see the tarp come out. You'll see Coach DeRose after a game. He'll get on all fours and crawl into that tunnel, and he'll get made fun of by all the parents. And do it's a big, it's a big thing. Do they use that tarp? Yeah. Okay. I mean, wait, if it starts raining, do you get oh, yeah. a bunch of kids I've that seen, will? I've seen plenty of times where the team after the game, they they're one of their responsibilities is to tarp the infield. So they get the gigantic tarp yeah. that will uh, that will do the infield. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I hated that in, in minor league baseball. That's smaller than softball because yeah. it's obviously smaller. But. Yep, in minor league baseball, um, you don't have a really big grounds crew. You just don't. Maybe four people, and and that's about it. Five at the most. Uh, you'll have you'll have the John Deers uh, running around with the rakes and the picks and the and the shovels and the. Uh, conditioner and the, all the other stuff that they use to uh, to make the field really nice and pretty, but they don't have enough people to pull that gigantic tarp. So when I was working specifically for the Lozenac family who owned the West End Diamond Jacks and then later the Altoona Curve, I was in the office at nine o'clock during home games. Now, why would a broadcaster be in there at nine o'clock in the morning? Because You know, uh, my job is to do game notes, and that's it. Well, you were also going to be pulling the tarp just in case the tarp needed pulled. Uh, So I can remember rain comes in a little before 7 o'clock. You get the phone call, and you make sure the cell phone is turned on. Hey, got to get to the ballpark. 6 o'clock in the morning, got to get to the ballpark. It's going to rain. Got to get the tarp put on. Pull out your worst shoes in the world. And somebody puts a uh, little, I don't even know what they would uh, put on the tarp, uh, like, like something that, you, that w- would be held there. They grab the John Deere and they race uh, across the outfield while this thing is rolling the tarp out. And then, uh, and then the, the, the nice little uh, 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 thing that the tarp is rolled on is now empty. So you've got this tarp in the outfield, this huge ass tarp in the outfield, and there's about fifteen or sixteen of us grabbing this tarp, and we're proceeding to pull this thing onto the onto the infield, make sure that it's nice and tight, and then you grab a, a, a heavy sandbag or something really heavy, Akron, or you or you nail it down. In Akron, what do they use? Uh, they can uh, they can use sandbags you know, in, there. In Akron, you, you you obviously use rubber tires. It may, <laughs> Firestone, they put tires on the tarp. There you go. Because it's Akron. You because have it's to. Akron. <laughs> so uh, we would have heavy sandbags 
uh, like those things that you would use for flooding. If, if, if there was massive flooding going on, you'd have the sandbags. You'd put the sandbags up real high, stack them real high to make sure that the flood uh, waters don't go uh, past the, the sandbags. Well, you use these heavy sandbags to throw down on the tarp. Tarp ain't going anywhere if you got these heavy sandbags. So you, you go every 10 feet, 15 feet or so, dropping a sandbag on the corner of, of the uh, tarp. The tarp itself is pretty heavy without water. Then when it starts raining like hell, you know that your tar your infield is going to be in pretty good shape. Now you got to make sure the outfield has good drainage, and most minor league outfields have really good drainage. There are a couple of cases, Huntsville, Alabama, where you literally see water pouring into the dugouts. <laughs> That's not good. That <laughs> where good? where you're waist high in the uh, in the dugout with water. And then you've got to make sure uh, that all the stuff in the, in the drain is not blocking because all the seeds and all the, uh, all the other crap that's, that's put in a, uh, in a dugout can sometimes clog the drains. And when the drains are clogged, well, you're screwed big time unless you get, that, get those things unclogged. Then all of a sudden you get this massive dumping of water and, and you see the, the, the water just coming into this drain uh, and it just completely gets rid of the water within a minute. All the water's gone in the dugouts. Well, if you have a massive amount of water on the tarp, it's kind of like pulling a ton of stuff. So you get 16 people. It's kind of like pulling a ton of stuff. Yeah, it's kind of like pulling Great literally 2,000 2, pounds of yeah, water. Newsflash, water is heavy. <laughs> yeah, so you got all this water on this, and you're like, well, we got to empty, empty out the uh, tarp. Uh, more rain is coming, so we're going to empty out the tarp. So 16 people dragging 2,000 pounds worth of water kind of an arduous it's kind of a really difficult thing to do so you're hanging on this thing as hard as you possibly can and then you get some momentum and and then it's tear off toward the outfield and then you see all of this water go into the shallow part of the outfield and then when the water's all clear well, now it's easy piece of cake to do this so you bring it back Put the put the uh, weighted uh, weighted sandbags on the whole nine yards, and then you're done. I always wanted to have the rain just come down at about five thirty, because then I got my get out of jail free card. I'm I'm preparing for my broadcast. Get out of jail free card. I'm I'm uh, I'm ready to go here. Occupado. No big deal. I'm occupied. Yeah, I'm occupied. I got I got uh, my lineups. I got to do all the other different things because from about three o'clock on, I'm pretty much swamped but at five o'clock to the start of the game i'm not available for tarp duty that's one of the best things about being the radio guy but before five o'clock get yourself down there and uh you got to help uh, help the process out so yeah that i had nightmares about pulling a tarp uh for so damn long with all the water and oh god it was a, just a miserable experience horrible and then it would come out of nowhere if it, if we didn't tarp it on Friday, but you knew you had a, a team was on the road. No, that was the other thing. If the team's on the road, another get out of jail free card because I'm following the team. Uh, but if the team is home and we didn't tarp it the night before and some clown didn't see the weather forecast or some clown in the weather uh, department screwed up the weather forecast <laughs> and you're like getting a call in the six o'clock in the morning yeah we gotta go to the ballpark because uh we're gonna get crapped on here and we got to do this because otherwise we're not going to be playing and we are expecting a huge crowd so you got to tarp the field oh god miserable just miserable they asked you to tarp the field at eastwood yet <laughs> No, 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 no. The get out of jail free card is I'm a, I'm a member of the AARP. That's uh, yeah. you don't know ARP. Yeah, that's I don't know it either. But but by God, I'm in my fifties now, so I'm like, nope, nope. I'm, I'm no, no. my get out of jail free card. It's not free because you're old. No, 
that's that's not that's their price. The one the one cool thing that I saw was the uh, final game where Sosa appeared at Pringles uh, at the at the at the old stadium, um, and we knew it was going to be difficult to get this final game in because we knew a typical southern June storm was brewing, and we knew that it was going to be a lot of rain. So, but the third inning, final game of the series, we're playing Birmingham, and the it had already rained much of the weekend, so this tarp was pretty, pretty heavy. Uh, the, sure enough, the rain started falling a little gently and whatnot. the The umpires didn't have a didn't have a clue about Jackson, Tennessee weather in in a certain part of June where it's just monsoon season. Uh, but it started raining, and then it started raining pretty good. Then the then the ref uh, the uh, umpire said, "Bring the tarp on." All right, so you can imagine these guys are bringing on a tarp that has been used for much of this four game series, and they can't get this thing. They can't even pull it to the infield. They're like, "Okay, we can't do this." All of a sudden, you see these twenty some odd kids coming out of the dugout on the first base side from Birmingham. Because they didn't want to get screwed out of playing with a big league player, so all of these guys at the, and at this point, yeah, I mean, it is really coming down at this point, and uh, these guys are all just pulling as hard as they can, trying to get this thing to cover the field so we could actually have some kind of a chance to do that. That tarp wasn't budging. So he had this tarp that had like 80% of the infield was covered. And here's the 20% that's now just, it's a mess. And and we're like, no, we're, we're not playing this game. It's 6,000 people are just going to have to, you know, it is what it is. You'll get your, you don't get a refund. You get a ticket to another game. And uh, yeah, it, it is what it is. We just weren't going to be able to play. But I thought it was so cool that every member of the Birmingham Barons uh, was like, we want our chance to play with a Major League Baseball player. And they all tried to pull this tarp, and it was to no avail. They, they, this tarp wasn't going anywhere. I mean, it, it was uh, it just wasn't going to happen. But it was cool to see that. You know, they, they, there should be a machine that can do it that way. Oh, I, you would think it, it, with with the invention of so many things, you would think that we would have that. Um, now I, I remember the old Bush Stadium used to have it automatically come up underneath the um, underneath the field of play. I've seen I've seen tarps that can just roll out on their own. Yeah, like, yeah. Well, that kind of stopped when Vince Coleman slipped and fell, and then this tarp started <laughs> rolling on his leg, and you're like, ah, somebody stop this tarp. Uh, you know, I mean, you, you you don't want Vince Coleman's leg to get uh, crushed in in multiple places. So, uh, but Bush Stadium used to have a tarp that would go underneath the field, and then they would push a button, and it would just magically arise, kind of like uh, someone coming. Now that's some kind up. of witchcraft. Yeah, that's, I was like, what kind of voodoo is this <laughs> stuff? Where it would it would it would just go <laughs> and and go to the top of a field level and then roll out. I'm like, oh, this is this is pretty yeah, uh, high tech of, stuff here. That's sorcery. Yeah, but then when Vince Coleman got his leg caught up on this, they were like, yeah, we're gonna stop doing that immediately because you you can't have Way a to major blow leaguer, it, Vince. Yeah, you can't have a major leaguer uh, get your leg caught into that thing and then have him have him shatter his leg. That's uh, you'll ruin a person's uh, baseball career that way. So that kind of kind of slowed Way that one Vince down. Ruined it for everybody. Yeah, well, it is what it is. That tarp was mine. <laughs> it's cold. <laughs> hey, you've seen some people get caught underneath one oh, of those that's, things. That's got to be the scariest thing ever. That and if a... the wind is blowing really hard and you get someone who's light up in the air. I got this guy. Yeah, <laughs> that's uh, that's not cool either. And I've seen both of those things happen. Uh, I've seen someone go about 10 feet up in the air, and I'm like, well, you can't let go of this thing because if you do... You did. <laughs> you got a, you got a heck of a drop ahead of you. Uh, 
But if you, you just don't let hang. go, it's going to slam yeah, you down. Yeah, if you don't let go, it's going to really slam you down. So it's kind of a kind of a touchy thing there. Uh, so you let it, go at the right time. Yeah, you let go with about three feet. Right. And, and then you can just, you know, whatever. But, yeah, I've seen someone go underneath that thing. And and you're you're seeing this the uh, the top of the tarp and and you're seeing the thing go. <laughs> What's going on here? <laughs> and then and then the uh, people are like pulling this thing way up here, so they're like, "Come on, get out, get out!" So they like they the, run out. It's oh, that's a scary thing. It's like that uh, when you played as a preschool kid, the parachute. Yeah, it's like that on steroids. Yeah, like, oh, you don't, you don't want no part of that. That's uh, that is a really scary thing. That's pulling a tarp is um, it's not my favorite thing to do. That's for sure. A lot of bad things can happen. Bad things, man. Bad things. It's a dangerous thing. Yes, it is. That's All right, three three zero eight eight six zero eight one three. More stories like a like a tarp veteran. We put our lives on the line every time. Well, we I <laughs> wouldn't go that far. <laughs> we made sure you baseball people could play. We put our lives on the line so you people could play baseball. Okay, Boomer. <laughs> Get those kids off my front lawn. That sounds like Ron a lot. He's always getting kids off. The oh, lawn. I don't. I don't tell my. I don't tell any kid to get off my front lawn. You don't have a front lawn. Well, kind of, sort of do. I mean, you know, front porch. No, I don't have a front porch. I thought porch. you lived in an apartment. No, I, I have a front lawn, but I don't have a front porch. I guess it's like a, it's it's more on the side, but it's 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 not a front porch. I mean, if somebody went on my front lawn, I'd be like, "You want to walk on the sidewalk?" <laughs> oh, I do not like footprints on my grass. Yeah, that's I, why I built my path. Yeah, I built a path here. Use it. All right, 330-886-0813, the MP Vivo heating and air conditioning hotline open for business. Take a time out. Be back with more. Stick around. Hi, everyone. This is DJ Yokely with Your Sports Network. We appreciate your support of YSN and welcome you to the YSN family. Our broadcast streams are brought to you live at no cost to you by sponsors that are local to this community. Without the vision and generosity of our sponsors and partners, we would not be able to bring this game to you today. So please support the great businesses and leaders that are making this game possible. And if you're a business in need of great advertising and sponsorship opportunities, feel free to head over to our site for more information on the right fit for you. We are local, we are loyal, and we are live. We are YSN. News doesn't stop after the sun goes down. Sometimes you just have to hustle to get it. At 21 News, no matter how far it is, no matter what it takes to get there, we're working to bring you the best stories and the freshest content at 11 p.m. with the context and clarity that makes it worth staying up for, no matter what time it is. 21 News at 11 with me, Aaron Simonek and Derek Steyer. 21 News at 11, news that's worth your time. WRS Wealth Advisors is the area's premier wealth and retirement specialist. With our combined 70 years experience and comprehensive wealth strategy, we assist our clients attain their goals. Call 330-965-0370 to learn more about our individual and corporate financial planning services or visit wrswealthadvisors.com. Good luck, athletes. Every customer has a story, whether it's buying a car for the first time, helping them get approved, or finding the perfect car for their budget. I'm proud that people trust me with their story. I'm Tracy, and I'm ready to go the extra mile for you only at Greenwood Chevrolet. At Greenwood Chevrolet, we go the extra mile for you. By finding you the right vehicle at the right price. By giving you confidence in your vehicle with the Greenwood Advantage Warranty. By guaranteeing you financing, regardless of your situation or credit history. And by being with you for every mile of your journey. At Greenwood Chevrolet, we do whatever it takes to go the extra mile. So, how can we go the extra mile for you? Ah, the details. Baird Brothers Fine Hardwoods is one fine ride. Perfect cornering, superb handling, sporty and stylish, power to spare, plus awesome mileage. 
Yeah, jaw-droppingly beautiful lines and well-appointed with luxurious trim. Put more oomph in your life and start beholding the molding. Find your home's fine hardwood at BairdBrothers.com. Planning a project around your home or rental property? Trust the electrical service to the local experts with 62 years of serving the Mahoning Valley. Joe Dickey Electric is your local go-to source for responsive, reliable residential electrical work. From everyday maintenance and repairs to new installations, electrical upgrades, and safety inspections, no job is too big or too small. Call Joe Dickey Electric today, 800-549-3976, or visit DickeyElectric.com. That's DickeyElectric.com for heating, cooling, and indoor air quality. The Mahoning Valley trusts MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning, offering worry-free repair, service, and installation. Call MP Vivo today for a free estimate. MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning. We're your energy-efficient experts. If you're looking for a new Ford vehicle, why shop anywhere else but Tri-State Ford? Choose from our great selection of new Ford models. Plus, we've got you covered with our exclusive Tri-State Ford Advantage. It includes a 10-year, 200,000-mile warranty with your new Ford. Come see why so many customers from the Tri-State area buy their new Ford at Tri-State Ford. Customer focus, community driven. Tri-State Ford East Liverpool or visit TriStateFord.net. Welcome back to a Wednesday edition of Running Point, presented by Greenwood Chevrolet on Mahoning Avenue in Austin Town. Ron Potesta with you alongside Anthony Hartwig. Got some good news, uh, and uh, Brian Tolnar made mention of this uh, when we had him uh, on in the 1 o'clock hour, uh, that perhaps we would be doing next week's show uh, from Mill Creek. Sure enough, DJ... Uh, just giving us the heads up, next Wednesday's show is going to be live from Mill Creek Golf Club. Yeah, we've been saying this for, for the last year. We're finally doing it, and we're going to get you on the green because we want we want recorded proof that you can putt because I don't believe it. What do you mean you don't believe it? <laughs> ah. I'd be sitting there with a putter like this, and I could probably out-putt you. How is how how can you say this? I can I can putt. I can putt. I mean, I, you know, well, it's yeah, not very the good. Of but putt is just hit the ball. Then yeah, yeah. Anyway. I mean, it's not very good, but I can <laughs> putt. I mean, you know, it's 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 not that bad. But uh, you may have to edit the uh, edit the live film because uh, I might say a few things that that aren't going to be very nice. But uh, yeah. Uh, so next Wednesday's show will be live from Mill Creek. Uh, as we are going to uh, take part in what I think is going to be really cool for the area. Both um, shows, too. Yeah. Hour, hour, and running point. And, and I, th- I think it's just going to be really, really cool for uh, for the area. The, the, the um, Mill Creek has been hosting the uh, the junior tournament for, uh, for a couple of years now. And, you know, w- we all sit back and talk about what B-League and when we bring in the NABF World Series and, and the out-of-town folks that – need a place to stay, need a place to eat, uh, and the economy gets better. This particular golf tournament, this is going to bring, an oh, just so much, so much money to the Mahoning Valley. And, you know, it's events like this that, you know, I, I, get, I get excited about, not only because of, the, because of the economic windfall that this area is going to get, but because it gives everyone an opportunity to see just how cool the Mahoning Valley is. And, and just how great the Mahoning Valley uh, is from a, from a standpoint of so many things to do, so many places to go. It's just I love, 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 love this area. Just do. Sorry for the random laugh. I just Our, our, our buddy Quinn caught me off guard. He has Mountain Dew in a, in a milk jug. And he was, he was what the hell kind of sorcery <laughs> is that? I did not... Did not expect to see that, so it really caught me off guard. All right, that's why I randomly laughed. So I, something off screen. Okay, uh, <laughs> Mountain Dew and a milk jug. <laughs> he looked like he's had this green liquid. I was like, "What are you doing?" Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, uh, whatever, whatever it takes. That Stay would, cool. That, that's it. That's it. I'm. I got a lot of water, so trying very hard not to uh, not to go after soda. 
Uh, now, I will be honest, went into the refrigerator and saw the Diet Pepsi, but didn't see the regular Pepsi or Mountain Dew. Had there been a regular Pepsi or a Mountain Dew, I probably would have probably would have partook. Grab this. Size. Yeah. I well, I mean this I wanted to I wanted to drink the water with barley and hops, but you know, uh, and it and it is our fourth anniversary. You know, I think an anniversary toast would have would have been uh, would have been nice, but uh, you know, I I will go along with the edict of no drinking on the air, which is which is a and good we thing. Are, we are not uh, Kelly and Hoda. We don't get to drink during the trip. Yeah. I did I did one time uh, in a baseball game only because um, and it was out in North Carolina and my uh, my high school uh, classmate had just come back from uh, his second tour of duty in Iraq and he was watching his first baseball game I got he and his his wife and and their kids some tickets to the game so he comes I don't know, I, he comes up to the broadcast booth and gives me a 32-ounce cup of Budweiser and says, all right, cheers. I'm like, the hell am I going to do with this? He goes, well, you know. Yeah, and, of course, this was this was during the commercial break. He goes, what, you're not allowed to drink on the air? And I'm like, yeah, I never really had out. a beer on the air. I mean, it's kind of frowned on. Uh, he goes, well, just think of yourself as Harry Carey and, you know, because they used to drink like crazy on the air. Uh, the, there's... Some interesting, right. yeah, a little interesting stories about Harry. How he and Jack Buck used to uh, have a have a little refrigerator in the broadcast booth uh, where where the old Bush Stadium was, and back then, it has the, the Bush. Well, the the um, the older owner of the Anheuser Busch, Gus, uh, who passed away, I want to say in the mid eighties, at like ninety some odd years of age, he owned the team. And they stocked that refrigerator daily with a case of Budweiser or Bush or whatever Anheuser Busch product. They stock it with Bush. Yeah, whatever Anheuser Busch product. And Jack Buck and Harry Carey, they'd take care of that uh, on a daily basis. So it was, uh, yeah. But I, I was like, eh, never, never really done. Okay, just for you. We'll do it. So drank the whole thing down uh, during the course of the game. No big deal. Didn't say anything you shouldn't. No, didn't say anything I shouldn't have. It was uh, it was good. So you know, no big deal. The only time I've done it though, that's uh, yeah. Know. Back then there was no video on you. Well, no, you were it, doing radio, so yeah, no one could tell. Yeah, exactly. Well, I mean, I could have put it very conspicuously very well, in the Greenwood Chevrolet. See, now Yeti. you got me wondering. If that's really water. It's water. <laughs> it's water. I mean, uh, you know, there's know there's there's no foam coming out of the uh, uh, coming out of my Yeti cup. It's water, you know. I mean, is that really Mountain Dew? Yes. Yeah, I mean, time. how do I know that's not gin or or <laughs> some or or something else that you could have? Uh, I never just, drink and drive. Yeah. Well, that, that, there you go. Could you? We've had this question. Yeah, before. we we have had this we had question. A police officer call in. Yeah, we we did have a police officer call in. Okay, never mind. We can't ask that question anymore. But and he never done, seen it before. So yeah, well, I'm just you know, I think it would be more Scotty before you. I think so too. Yeah, you know. Scotty's a lot cooler than I. Am. Yeah, Scotty would be the one that would be past me about seven or eight beers and then try to wheel out of here and get caught. <laughs> he he would be that kind of you know, you know, so I don't think you would do that. Your straight is narrow. Scotty. Uh, he's cooler than me. Oh, he is. He, he, there's no question. There's no question. Hell, he's cooler than 99% of the people in this building. He's cooler than Miles Davis. Yeah, well, that's, you know, that's pretty, it's pretty damn cool, let me <laughs> tell you. All right, coming up in about 13 minutes, you get Power Hour. DJ and the boys will take you through the 3 o'clock hour on Wednesday. We say we take a time out when we come back. We got B-League action on the network tonight. We got to uh, talk a little bit about that. B-League action on the network. That's coming up after this timeout. Stick around. At Greenwood Chevrolet, we go the extra mile for you. By finding you the right vehicle at the right price. And by being with you for every mile of your journey. Visit GreenwoodChevrolet.com and tell us how we can go the extra mile for you. 
New things happen all day. Some are good, some not so good. In today's complicated world, while you're busy working, playing, and living life, we're busy helping you make sense of the day's news. And there's only one place where it comes together with clarity, context, and accountability. It's 21 News at 6 with me, Madison Tromler, and Derek Steyer. 21 News at 6. It's what the day's news really means to you. Welcome home to a home made homier with Baird Brothers Fine Hardwoods. Inspiration starts at BairdBrothers.com and is turned into reality when high quality hardwoods are delivered right to your home. Baird Brothers has the latest design trends, shiplap and skinny lap interior siding, antique oak rustic flooring, and, well, you'll find them all at BairdBrothers.com. Ordered easily, delivered conveniently, enjoyed comfortably. BairdBrothers.com. WRS Wealth Advisors, the area's premier wealth and retirement specialists. Located on South Avenue in Boardman. Hi, this is Jim Myers with Myers Family Insurance, your local Medicare and retirement resource. We're excited to have sports back. Whether you're on the field or cheering from the stands, sports unifies communities and brings hope for the future. We're all one team working together. At Myers Family Insurance, we know the importance of a great team. Our team continues to grow to help you with your Medicare and retirement needs. The annual election period is October 15th through December 7th. Now's the time to make sure your plan continues to meet your needs for the upcoming year. Call today. Hi, I'm Colin Chupa. And I'm Kelsey Clem from K-Squared Marketing. Our boutique marketing firm specializes in media planning and buying, public relations, event marketing strategies, and strategic sponsorships. We can integrate our services with your existing game plan, or we can be your entire marketing team. Your goals, our game plan. Let's, Let's win, win together. together. Call K Squared Marketing at 330-623-2730 or visit ksquared.marketing to learn more. At Hubbard Chevrolet, Hubbard can help you get the financing you need regardless of your situation. I'm Tony Pache and I've helped thousands of customers in Northeast Ohio and Western Pennsylvania buy a vehicle. Bad credit, no credit, no problem. I can get you approved for a low interest loan and maybe even a low payment lease on a new car at the number one Chevy dealership in Trumbull County for three years in a row. Visit HubbardChevy.com to get pre-approved or come see me, Tony Page, to get a new vehicle today. Remember folks, Hubbard can help. Every customer has a story and at Greenwood Chevrolet, we are committed to making sure it ends with you in the right vehicle. I get to be part of somebody's adventure whether it's buying a car for the first time, helping them get approved, or finding the perfect car for their budget. I'm proud that people trust me with their finances. They trust me to take care of them, and they trust me with their story. I'm Tracy, and I'm ready to go the extra mile for you only at Greenwood Chevrolet. Quality, customer service, and integrity. Those are the four words that have driven our success since 1957 at Joe Dickey Electric. Joe Dickey Electric is one Mahoning Valley landmark business that stays current with the requirements of our customers. Family owned and managed, we are an electrical contractor and energy solutions provider. Every member of our team adds to his or her skill set through ongoing training. Residential, commercial, industrial, automotive, and more. We keep ahead of the needs of our customers with a fleet of more than 50 vehicles and 24-7 emergency service, so you're never left in the dark. Jimmy Sudman here, director of Isle, Purple Cat, and Golden String. We are happy to support YSN and two of my favorite people, Scotty Mincher and Super Dave O'Malley. We are an agency that provides services for adults with disabilities. We infuse humor, passion, and joy into their lives. If you know of any folks with disabilities that need our assistance, please contact us. Your teams work hard and give it all they've got. Well, so does ours. Because 21 Sports and YSN give you extra effort when covering local sports. 21 Sports and YSN, winning coverage of our Valley's teams. When looking for home design inspiration, don't just be inspired, be Baird inspired. Whether new or remodeling, Baird Brothers has the latest trends like shiplap to refresh your home. Go from inspiration to installation with our wide selection of in-stock American hardwoods. 
From the rustic charm of antique oak to the warmth of traditional cherry, Baird Brothers has what you need to make your home inspiring. Baird Brothers, our family's heritage, your family's home. Welcome back as we close up shop on this Wednesday edition of Running Point. Ron Potasta with you alongside Anthony Hartwig. Anthony, what's going on on the network tonight? We got six Class B games uh, all at Bob Seam Park on all three fields, two games on each. We have five 18 U games and one 14 U game starting at uh, 5.30 with 14 U on scene two and 18 U on scene three. And then at 6 o'clock, an 18U game will start at scene 1. Um, 8 o'clock, 8.15, and 8.30 for the next three games on scene 1, 2, and 3. Andy, Jacob, and Jamie all being on the call uh, for you there. So six games on the network tonight. And once again, all class B, 5, 18U, 1, 14U. Yeah, the 14U game uh, is going to be the Astro Falcons taking on A to Z athletics from what I understand. And the 18 U games, uh, at five 30 and six, the five 30 game ballistic against nightline, uh, the six o'clock game athletics against Dura edge. Uh, and then at eight o'clock, uh, 18 U whiting roll offs against avalanche, uh, eight 15, 18 U prospects against Eagle wear, uh, eight 30, 18 U Astros and Creekside could be fun. Could be fun. Also, the Scrappers in action against West Virginia uh, in Morgantown. Uh, Colin Floyd pitched last night. Did not go well uh, as the uh, Scrappers were knocked off last night by the West Virginia Black Bears, though they still have first place in the um, uh, in the MLB fourth, Draft League. Fourth loss? Uh, fourth loss of the year for the Scrappers. They're now 9-4. and four. Uh, West Virginia has taken over second place, six wins, three losses, three ties. Williamsport eight five and one. So they do tie if it yes. goes too long. If it's uh, if it's nine innings and you don't have a winner, it's a tie game. No extras. No extra innings in this uh, in this. I league. thought they were putting on first and third with one out. With... Yeah, they decided not to. Oh. Yeah, so it's a uh, tie game. A tie ball game. A lot of things that are a little different. Uh, the starting yeah. pitcher uh, got bombed in the first inning on on Sunday. He was out there to pitch the second inning, and then that was it. Uh, he he uh, he went back out, re-entered in the game. Uh, it's you know, there's the the rules are a little lax. It's more of a showcase, uh, but still a, a cool product uh, for those that uh, have not come out. Uh, you can certainly get your tickets three three zero five zero five zero zero zero. Softball fans, game two of the women's college world series tonight. Florida State looking to beat stunned. Oklahoma. Yeah, they Which stunned them yesterday. We'll see. See if the Seminoles over, can take care of it. Over 12,000 people in the stands in OKC. It's good for the sport. Tune in. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, we're out of here. Power Hour is coming up next. Enjoy the rest.